Thank you very much and have a great day. Oh, man. The championship leader, Jeff Burton, field warming up on the track at Talladega. We come back, final stories from Pit Road and the Green Flag. The cars still running the pace laps here at the Talladega Super Speedway. They will get the one to go this time. Final stories from Pit Road before we go green. Let's go down to Marty Snyder. And Bill, you heard Jeff Burton say on the radio to BP that his plan today is to stay up front as long as he can. He said, you know, when he came into the chase, we had a plan that we were going to run up front as long as we could, do everything we've done this year, but maybe do it a little bit better. Sure, he could run in the back and protect the championship lead and maybe make a run towards the front at the end of the race. But he said, you know what? We're sticking with our plan. And if we would have wrecked when I was in the back, I would second guess that all week long. If we wreck when we're up front trying to win the race, I won't have a problem sleeping tonight. Nah. Marty, what a difference a year makes. Back in 2005, Jeff Gordon missed the chase for the next Hell Cup, but he won two of the four restrictor plate races this year. He was locked in, but he's failed to finish better than 15th. He's been shuffled out of the lead at the wrong time, and really timing is everything. Just add to Detroit Tigers who knocked the Yankees out of the playoffs. Gordon knows it's time for a Jeff Gordon-type performance. Twelve times he's bounced back from a finish of 30th or worse and gone to victory lane. He starts today sixth in the championship stand. Dave, Matt, Kevin Harvick has to do two things today. That's keep the pedal down and race heads up. He's got to keep the gas pedal down all the time here at Talladega. Obviously, that's something you do. But coming to pit road, he has to check those brake pads. Keep the brake pedal down just a little bit to make sure the pads are near the brake rotors because that's the only time he'll use them. As far as racing heads up on the track, but also on pit road, he smacked that dab in the middle of pit road, pit stall 19. That means he's got to watch what he's doing exiting pit road. Don't ding up any of the fenders on that beautiful number 29. Alan? Well, the 10 drivers chasing the championship, and in particular, the drivers toward the back of that group have already had a bad finish during the chase. Today could be the day. Finish up front while some others get caught in the big wreck, and it could revive their championship hopes, but get swept up in that accident themselves and have a bad finish, and it could end their chances for a championship. Jimmy Johnson might be among that group. He starts third today. He's pitted in the first stall all the way at the end of pit road. A season's worth of work wiped out by one wipeout. That's what some teams could be facing this afternoon here at Talladega. Bill? Thanks, Alan. You guys have a great day down there. Go online to NBCSports.com and check out the entire pit map in the NASCAR section. Championship leader Jeff Burton on the radio a few moments ago. How his spotter can help get him through the day. Spotters, just remember, we're at Talladega. You, you know, you can't talk too much. I make the decision on where I'm going to go. You just tell me, just like you guys always do, what's around me. Jeff Burton starting in the middle of the pack. Lot of inexperience <laughs> in the front few rows of this field today, including on the pole, David Gilliland in that 38 car in his first Nextel Cup race at Talladega. I don't expect to him to really have too many friends these first couple laps, BP. I think these guys are going to really try to get by him as quick as they can. I wouldn't be surprised if Jimmy Johnston, Greg Biffle, doesn't try to hook up and don't try to hook up and get on the inside of the 38 car down the back stretch. That yellow line that you see on the very bottom of the racetrack, we'll be talking about that all day long. That's out of bounds. It's out of bounds. These cars cannot go below that line. NASCAR brought that up in the driver's meeting. We'll keep an eye on that. 43 cars, 500 miles at Talladega on a repaved racing surface with a slightly smaller restrictor plate. The place is packed. It's race number four in the chase for the next Hell Cup championship. A rookie takes him to the green flag. Glad you were along for the ride.
MVP, the pin has been pulled from the hand grenade. We just don't know how long the fuse is. How long can you hold your breath? You can hold it a long time because you have to here. You see, Dale Jarrett was able to beat his teammate to come back and lead that first lap. That's huge for David Gilliland, I would think, to be able to follow Dale Jarrett, his teammate. Jarrett in the 88, Gilliland in the 38. Jeff Gordon on the outside with a teammate right behind him. And Jimmy Johnson third in that inside row. Drivers in yellow on the ticker at the top of the screen. The 10 drivers in the chase for the next Hell Cup championship. Gordon trying to get the lead. Five bonus points on the line here. If Gordon can lead at start finish. There we go. They're splitting them. Dale Jarrett stuck in the centers. And Gilliland that time drove on the inside of his teammate Jarrett trying to get to work his way to the front. Now but there's 24 cars in front. Sorry, BP. Now, it used to be, you know, being in the center got a little bit spooky at this place because it was so bumpy. But now it's different. This place is so smooth. You can drive anywhere on this racetrack. It's like being on a freeway. So it's going to be interesting to see if maybe that center line won't be so bad today. Gordon did lead the last lap. Got his five bonus points. They won about the 88. You know, we were used to seeing him drop to the back early on in these races. He told me uh, this morning before we talked to him on Cut Down to Green that he would stay up in the front of this pack as long as the pack allowed it. If he gets freight trained early, he will make his way to the back as normal. But he said, if my car will stay up there, getting some help from Kevin Harvick right now, I'll race at the front. You see that, folks? 198 miles per hour. They're going through the turns at 195 on board with Dale Jarrett. Back stretch as they get in that draft, as they run nose to tail, getting faster and faster. 198, 199. Wow. What's Gilliland saying, Marty? BP, an impressive showing for this young 30-year-old so far. His plan was exactly like his teammate, Del Jarrett. I'll stay up front as long as I can, but right now, he's getting shuffled to the back. He said once he does go to the back, his plan is to stay there for most of the race, try and make a run late in the race, though, but stay there and gain some experience. McMurray's going to lead that lap. Check out those two Roush cars. McMurray and Biffle, the 26 and 16, go to the front. They've shuffled Jeff Gordon back to uh, about fifth or sixth. This is about a 33 car pack. About 10 drivers have dropped behind the lead pack. And Kyle Busch hung on the bottom of the racetrack in that five car and watch him lose positions because he doesn't have a car to draft with. I'm not sure he might not be trying to get to the back there too, BT. Some of these guys you see really falling through the back of the field. I'm not sure if they're just trying to get out of this pack. Yeah, the problem with Gilliland, he backed up into Tony Stewart, who's going the other way. Matt Kenseth in that 17 car in the middle of that pack. McMurray, the race leader. And DJ trying to get back to the second position and does, bringing Jeff Gordon with him. McMurray has the one career win four years ago, October 13, 2002. Down the backstretch. And as Benny pointed out, that yellow line is out of bounds. You cannot go down there to pass a driver. Kyle Busch during qualifying yesterday was a little concerned about a tire rub on his left front fender. It may be that he backed up just to ride to make that first pit stop and get that fender knocked out a little bit with a hammer. He was hoping for an early pit stop because it was an impound race. You can't touch the car after qualifying. Update on the five for Marty. You guys mentioned that left front tire rub, BP. They were a little bit concerned about that in qualifying yesterday. They also had that left front tire rub. Not by design for Kyle Busch. He is not falling to the back intentionally. He got shuffled out, but that was their plan to stay out front. But it looks like to me he's going back on purpose, doesn't it? Definitely giving up some positions, Marty. You just see how close these guys run each other. Even though this place is smooth, these cars are still going to move around a lot. When you're in the draft, the air plays a lot of games with your car. 
One minute the car will turn, the next minute it won't turn. Then you go to the next corner, and then it turns too good. So you've always got to be on top of that steering wheel. I still thought the onboard cameras would be, you know, would look more bumpy than that, but it must really be just ultra smooth. It's smooth, but you see how the cars are moving left right. to right? That's all the aero on these cars. The air moves these cars around like you can't believe. I mean, sometimes you'll come off a of turn two, and it feels like somebody's just picking the front of the car up off the racetrack. So you just got to completely stay on top of the steering wheel. And like I said, it, it, you are completely focused on what that car is doing every second around this racetrack. Jeff Gordon got some help from teammate Brian Vickers, moves back in front. Update on car 24 from Matt Yoakum. Things changed so quickly here, Bill. Moments ago, he had the 25 of Vickers and the 48 of Jimmy Johnson in tow. And Jeff wanted to know to keep abreast of the situation around him, not only who was behind him, which was his teammate, but who was behind him. So that way, he would know whether maybe some juking around may take place, A.B. Brian Vickers in the Hendrick 25 on the outside of Jeff Gordon, trying to take a stab at the race lead. Vickers led the last race here at Talladega in April until the white flag when he was passed by Jimmy Johnson. Vickers has not won an Nextel Cup Series race yet. He and his team feel today they've got a great shot. Tell you what, Alan, that 25 car, Vickers looked awfully fast that last time. And that time, he seemed like he had trouble getting there in turn three yeah. and had to back off the throttle, Wally. I think you're right, BP. You see, he's really back that high line up right there. And if you just lift off the throttle here and lose momentum, you lose position after position. And with that slightly smaller restrictor plate, it might be a little harder to suck up to the pack or to the car in front of you. Matt, how about that nine car, Casey Kane? His spotter, his cousin, Cole Kane, just told him about a lap and a half ago, BP, it looks like more momentum is on the outside lane versus the middle where he was trying to run. So he dove up to the high side to get in line. Just listen to the engine. Well, we went back off the onboard camera, but we would hear that Casey Kane would never lift off the throttle. Look at Elliott Sadler on the outside, three wide, going for the lead. And he had a good point. This is really his only, you know, trial run before the Daytona 500 in a Dodge with a restrictor plate. So he really does have to work hard today to see what that car will do for him. Sadler's got a good run up there. He talked about getting to the front. A lot of these guys want to get to the front. They feel that may be the safest place if the wreck does happen. And a lot of times you'll see as this race goes on, four or five, six guys will break out from the pack and run single file. That's where you want to be if you can get in that situation. Eleven laps in the book at Talladega. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. We'll take a break. If trouble breaks out, we'll break in. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Fourteen laps complete here at Talladega. Jeff Gordon continues to lead our Chevy drivers to watch. Their best finish here at Talladega, Earnhardt Jr. with the five wins. Gordon, a four-time winner. Jimmy Johnson won here in May. Kevin Harvick has finished second here twice. Our Chevy drivers to watch. Well, Tony Stewart drives his Chevrolet, and he's finished second six times. Yes, here. he does. And yes, he has. There's Junior. How about it, Alan? Uh, we'll keep an eye on Dale Jr., who really hasn't gone very far in this race, Bill, and maybe there's a reason why. My uh, airbox twin, Martin, blows hot air. I'll be okay, though. All right, it's full. Cool. be in that pack in a lap. Don't worry, I'm just, they just run it for a wide shit. It don't make no sense. Now, a couple different things there, Junior's talking about. The air box he's referring to, I believe, is the one that blows cool air inside the driver's helmet. Keeps him fresh throughout the day. We'll see if that becomes a factor for Junior later in the day. As far as not going anywhere, well, they're three and four wide in front of you. I don't think he really wants to get in the middle of that right now. Well, he's, he's looking like he's getting in the middle of an AB, and I'll tell you what, just about a lap ago, he was all the way out of the throttle. Uh, because when those cars are like that in front of you, three, four wide, I mean, there's such a draft in the back of that pack. It doesn't take much to catch the pack. He caught him so fast, he had to completely get out of the gas, and he's still passing cars, so. You know, it's hard to sit back there when you're a racer. The plan is, well, let's go to the back and let's ride it out, and if the wreck happens, then, you know, we'll be safe. And then after about 15 laps, you're going, man, that looks like fun. I want to get up there and get in it, so. 
pretty hard to run back there when you're competitive. And so far, Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt Jr. in the A car has had the fastest lap of the race. About 32 cars in that lead pack. Goes McMurray down on the bottom, underneath Gordon, trying to take the slot away. But does he have any help? Well, he's got Kenseth back there, but Jeff Gordon has Robbie Gordon in that seven car pushing hard on the back bump of that 24. Dave, that seven car is going somewhere. And he just radioed his crew that he may want to go somewhere to the back of the pack, BP. You can see him losing down the middle right now. He talked about wanting to go to the back. He got up there for a while. He found out his car could lead or could run the lead pack, and now he wants to move his way back. Look at that seven dropping already, trying to find a safe way to get to the back of the pack. McMurray trying the inside for the lead. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car would love to lead a lap and get the five bonus points, but it doesn't look like it'll be this lap. McMurray in that 26 car up in front of Gordon. Johnson falls in line. Allen? Jimmy Johnson's first words on his radio about 10 laps into this race build where he called into his pit in his spotter and said, does it look as wild out there as it does from here? <laughs> and the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> Down the back stretch, McMurray leads. Gordon challenges. Matt. McMurray powered back into the lead, Bill. Three of his last five top five finishes have come right on restricted plate tracks. He's got some friends up there, the 17 of Kenseth, and also had the 16 of Biffle. Right now, he starts to move up half a lane. The only thing he said on the radio, this car has so much speed, you would not believe it. Marty? He has his teammate, Matt Kenseth, behind him, and Matt would love to check out one thing off his list today. That's leading a lap and getting those five bonus points you guys spoke of earlier. Problem is, Matt in the 17 car has lost his teammate, Greg Biffle, who pushed him up to the front. Now he needs a little help from the guy in front of him, Jamie McMurray, but he really wants those five bonus points early in this race. McMurray runs well here, three top tens, including two fifth-place finishes in the last three Talladega races. His teammate behind him, a 25 car, Brian Beckers. Teammates on the inside, teammates on the outside. Coming around to complete lap 21 at Talladega. Jamie McMurray is the race leader you're watching NASCAR on NBC. 23 laps are complete at Talladega in Talladega, Alabama. The UAW Ford 500, Jeff Gordon in a Chevy continues to lead. Jamie McMurray right behind him. Elliot Sadler on the low side of the racetrack. Take a look at our auto zone in the zone drivers. Kurt Busch, four straight top 10 finishes. Tony Stewart comes in off the win last week. And Jeff Burton, the championship leader. Our auto zone in the zone drivers here at Talladega. You can't believe these guys getting out of the throttle, BP. Having to get out of the throttle, we see the 78 car, Kenny Wallace. Looks like a tire rub or something. Should I come in? Looks like you should because it will not fix itself. And McMurray back to the front. And Biffle and Kenseth behind him. Three rash cars running. Nose to tail. I can't say they're running one, two, three because Jeff Gordon's in the mix. <laughs> See that eight car sitting there in ninth spot. Just about five laps ago, he was in 30 something spot. Got a pretty good car. Kenny Wallace has made it to pick road. That's on board with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now yeah, you're just flat on the gas here way around if you just got to get if you slow down a little bit you want to just ride the brake you really don't want to get out of the throttle yeah I talked to a driver I talked to a driver that was in the truck race yesterday and he said he believed he wore the brakes out on that truck drag him just trying to keep from hitting the truck in front of him Alan uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. says his philosophy on this race today Bill was going to be to run hard and run up front why 
because if you're in the lead, you're a lot less likely to get taken out by somebody else's mistake. He's making his move up through the pack after starting back in 33rd. Marty. And Allen looked to his flank. Right beside him is his wingman, Tony Stewart. At lap 15, they were at the very back of this front pack. They have made their way up in 11 laps to the very front of the pack. I come to Tony right before the race. I said, will you and the eight car work together? He said, yeah, man. Friday, we were terrific in practice together. He's my unofficial teammate. And teammates always have to work together. Matt? Closing in on the first pit stop window now. Mark Martin, third in points, has been running at the back, trying to play it safe, but he's also been running at half throttle. That way, Pat Tracy knows exactly how much ballpark figure fuel mileage he is getting, because remember, the smaller fuel cells, about a can, just a little over a can and a half, maybe, or so, when they hit pit road, you'll see some unique strategies as well. See, that's another thing that NASCAR does on super speedways. They reduce the amount of fuel these cars can carry. It's about 14 gallons. These cars can run about 35 laps, 33 to 37, 38 laps. But it doesn't matter. If the whole field pits at 33 and you can go to 38, you better pit with those. You got to pit with those cars. And one thing, another thing that's real important here, if these guys have to make pit stops under green, you can lose the draft if you make one small mistake coming down pit road. That means locking up the tires when you come in if you don't plan on changing them, or, or I mean, just getting a good start. You've got to get that in and out of pit lane fast. Was an oil leak for Kenny Wallace. We're going to try and duck in the break. If they start pitting, we'll cut in. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Your championship leader Jeff Burton has hit pit road here at Talladega on lap 31. It's going to be four tires. Jeff Burton, they radio to him, said, what do you think, two or four? He said four is the way to go. Obviously, a last second change, though. Two tires. Quick stop, Dave. Elliot Sadler on pit road. Dale Jarrett on pit road. Jarrett will take two right side tires only. For Sadler, who had been running so well for his first time in a Dodge, they will go for two as well. He's already on pit road. Dale Jarrett also has been on, made his stop, now heads off of pit road. Joe Nemechek's been on and off of pit road. Michael Waltrip, Reed Sorensen. Now here comes the rest of the field off turn four. And you have to be so careful here. From 199 miles an hour to 55. Marty. Kyle Busch went all the way to the back of the field and made his way back up to the front of the field. He said he was just riding early on. Two tires, a very slight air pressure adjustment. They have to wait a second for the field, Dave. Kevin Harvick wanted to pit on the last time around. He couldn't because of too much traffic. They will come down this time. He will take on two right side tires as well. Matt, service already complete for Jeff Gordon. He and the two car of Kurt Busch, two tires, but the 10 getting a pass through penalty. Too fast entering pit road for Scott Riggs. Man, those penalties will just absolutely ruin your entire day. That's right. That's what I was saying. You can't, you've got to be able to get in, in and out of pits here without any mistakes. And this yellow line, as these cars leave pit road, they've got to stay below that yellow line. Marty, 17 to you. Yeah, BP, and he wanted those five bonus points so bad they couldn't keep him out on the racetrack any longer. Not sure that they got those. I'm fairly certain they didn't, as a matter of fact. Two tires for the 17, just like everybody else. Dave? His Roush Racing teammate Greg Biffle on pit road as well. They will also go for two right side tires only. Don't want to lose that main pack. Fill it full of fuel. He's gone. Marty. Tony Stewart on his way down pit road, Dave. They were a little concerned about the water temperature, 240, so they removed a small piece of tape. Tony also went to the high line, trying to breathe that car a little bit, get that water temperature down. And you see all these guys changing two tires. The first car that made a pit stop in that lead back and changed two, yet that everyone then had to change two. Monkey see, monkey do, huh? Exactly, because you cannot afford to change four and get caught out of the draft. You see that yellow line, Benny, you were talking about that. You have to stay below that yellow line all the way to the back stretch. Just like Casey Keene and Mark Martin are doing. Now they can blend up, but they've got to get up through the gears and not let these packs get away from them. It's a couple of guys like Robbie Gordon Looked like he got out of the pits a little bit late. And he possibly lost that lead pack. You see, and this is the reason that NASCAR changed to the smaller fuel cells. So that they would make more pit stops and break those big packs up and get these cars a little bit in line. It's, it's a safety measure. It worked better on paper, though, than on the racetrack. It did. They're trying. But you watch these guys. In a couple of laps, they'll all be back together in a big bunch. 
Matt Kenseth did not lead a lap. As Marty talked about, they wanted to get him those five bonus points, but he has not gotten them yet. Greg Biffle, the race leader. Crew cam, BP. All right, Todd Foster, Birmingham, Alabama zone. Rear tire changer for Tony Stewart. It's off, five lug nuts tight. Go, Tony. Green all the way at Talladega, 38 laps are complete. Kyle Busch is the race leader. His brother, Kurt, right behind him. Tony Stewart led a lap. Had six different race leaders. in that outside lane, getting some help from Carl Edwards. It's Junior in the eight, Edwards right behind him. And Junior's going for the lead off of turn four. Wants the lead and the five bonus points that come with it. Listen, can you hear the crowd, folks? What'd you say? I can. Good job, dude. Earnhardt leads at Talladega. I don't think he'll be lifting now. <laughs> Alan, Dale Earnhardt Jr. came into this race seventh in the championship, Bill, 123 points off the lead, saying this was a big weekend for him. Talladega is always a race that shakes up the chase. He thought they could make some serious gains on a championship with a good run today. I'd say 30 and third to the lead in the first 40 laps is a good run so far. He wasn't very happy after qualifying, was he? No, no, not at all. But, uh, you know, we're going to see cars like Junior go to the front, get shuffled to the back, come back to the front again all race long. That's what it's like here. It's one of the places, places packed side by side with Kyle Busch that time. Computer gave it to Earnhardt. Coming out of it. That's Casey Mears right in front of Clint Boyer. That, it, that must like be water. water. Yeah. If it was oil, don't you think when they're when we clean our camera it would smear? Yeah. So that car may be overheating a little bit, PP. And that's getting all over the windshield too, right? Yes, it is. And that's a lot tougher to clean. <laughs> yeah, he he can't, he doesn't have a machine that he can just hit a button and it <laughs> wipes across and cleans it off. Jeff Burton, championship leader, fourth in that inside lane. Time now for the singular race talk question. Which driver will win a restrictor plate race first? The vote, text the word race to 191 on your singular wireless phone. You'll have a chance to win a first class trip to Miami. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Huge pack up front. Earnhardt, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch is up there. Carl Edwards. Now, you said if you make a mistake on pit road, it can really cost you? It can cost you. Well, take a look at Scott Riggs. Got caught for speeding on pit road. Three wide for the lead. And there's Riggs. And, and Riggs is going into turn one, right, as these, this pack is going to turn one. So these guys are going to catch and put Riggs a lap down here and left on a couple of laps. And that's what happens. You've got a mistake. You make a mistake on this deal. Or even if it's not a mistake, if some bad luck happens to you, like Robbie Gordon had a tire roll in front of him, you lose the pack. When you lose the pack, you're about a second and a half to two seconds slower than the rest of the field, Matt. And Wally today has taken another turn for the worse for Scott Riggs. Not only is he trying to battle back from his pit road miscue, something amiss with his seat. Now, these cars are so sealed up. For aerodynamic reasons, he says, the seat is burning me. It is extremely hot, so not exactly sure if his air conditioning system, which a lot of guys have that pumped into the seat, is working or, or something amiss there. But he is definitely complaining of an extremely hot seat. Yeah, that's, and you know, on a racetrack like this, you're running almost 200 miles per hour on the straightaways. You're not getting any air inside these race cars. These cars are so sealed up. You run a side window, you try to pour some air with some air tubes and things like that to keep the driver cool. But you could light a match on the backstretch on the inside of one of these race cars. Really? That's how still the air is inside these cars. So these drivers are sitting right above the exhaust system that goes underneath the car that's about 1,000 degrees. And their rear end is about four or five inches from that. 
So you see the pack about to catch Riggs. Update on Jimmy Johnson from Allen. Started the race in third. Bill was challenging for the lead earlier. Now he's back in 34th place. Lost a lot of that ground on his pit stop. Then said this to his team on the radio right after going back onto the racetrack. Give it till I tell you, buddy. Push the car. I don't know if it's clutch was slipping or what, but I have the clutch all the way in. Just trying to keep the yards up for the time to go. Sorry about that. So Johnson losing ground there on his pit stop. And now the problem is, you saw that uh, picture from Clint Boyer's car. Well, Jimmy said the same thing. He said he can't see a thing out the windshield of his car. And he said it a couple times now. He's back in the second pack, if you will. And but the second pack is only four and a half. Jimmy Johnson is four and a half seconds behind the leader, Kyle Busch, or Dale Earnhardt Jr., or whoever just happened to be playing front now. But see how this pack is running, BP? You can't run side by side if you're in that last pack. These guys need to line up just like and that. stay in line because if they don't, that lead pack is going to keep getting further and further away, and it's going to be harder for eight or nine cars to catch a pack that's got 30 some cars in it. Outside the top 20 right now, Denny Hamlin, Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, among others. Earnhardt Jr. in that outside lane with Kenseth behind him. And here comes Kyle Busch and Jamie McMurray. Update on Kyle Busch for Martin, who now has the lead again. And about 30 laps ago, he was back in that second pass. He came on the radio. The crew was kind of worried for a while. They said, can you hear us? He said, yeah, I can hear you. I'm just riding. I got shuffled out. Didn't want to fight it. I know we have a good car that can get us back to the front. This is the latest and greatest Speedway car from Hendrick Motorsports, a brand new car. In fact, they wanted to bring this car so desperately, they did not bring the car that finished second at Daytona. They want to use this car next year in the Daytona 500. And if it survives and runs well like it's running right now, all of the Hendrick cars will be just like Kyle's for next year's 500. Good way to make sure it survives to stay right where he's at. Matt Kendall, the 17 car, had a great run. Now he's getting a little push from the 8 car of Junior. And watch that, what that push did for Kendall. He got it by Kyle Busch by five car lengths. And this would be Junior helping Kenseth, two guys in the chase for the championship. Kenseth has not led a lap yet. Lead a lap, you get five bonus points, and he's going to get them right here. Matt Kenseth leads Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jamie McMurray. 46 laps, all green so far at Talladega. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. laps are complete and this is for the lead in the UAW Ford 500 at Talladega. Matt Kenseth in the 17. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right behind him then Kurt Busch in the two. I tell you what that eight car is a great pusher but he's not as good as these other cars when he gets in front Wally. He's not a good leader it doesn't appear like. Yeah I'm not sure yet on that BP. <laughs> I don't know if he's playing around or because it just looks like he's got the strongest car out there right now to me. About to find out. He's going for the lead. And, I mean, and he didn't even any, need any help doing it, so. Bush Brothers on the inside. Kurt Bush wants to take the lead from Junior. It just looks like when the eight car hits that wall of air and doesn't have a car to draft with, that he's just not as good as he needs to be. He was concerned yesterday after qualifying a great deal about the gear selection that they chose. So it may be that he's got enough gear to draft, but he doesn't have quite enough once he gets out there by himself. Well, let's see what happens here if he's got somebody to help him. Let's see if Kenta can stay with him. He's got a good push there. He'll ride up in front of the two car of Kurt Busch. Sure looks like he's got a strong car, AB. Yeah, he's got a very strong car, and he came on the radio and said that a little while ago. But I talked to Tony Uri Jr. about that gear selection this morning that his driver wasn't all that happy about. Tony Uri Jr. told me that he didn't think it was going to be that big a concern. He said it was only a couple of points of gear they were talking about. The RPM difference was very minimal. He thought they would be okay in the race today. We'll see if that is how it ends up playing out. I think it... He's got somebody behind him. He'll be okay. It just almost looks like a lot of times he'll make a pass on somebody, and then there'll be so much gap, somebody gets a good run on him. Jeff Gordon this time by in the 17th position. Matt 
Bill, eight laps ago, he decided to fall to the back. He couldn't run the preferred line where his car has been the best, and that's in the middle. So he dropped to the back, and this is what he told his crew chief, Steve Latar, moments ago. Yeah, it's, it's, either, it's either hang back here or I got to go get in that outside lane and try to make some things happen out there. Well, whatever you think is better, buddy. You know, there's a group of cars behind you, so we got a little safety net. I got no problem right there if you're comfortable. I think it's good. It's just, uh, you know, the guys are blocking that metal lane really good, and certainly from the inside, you, you get screwed. Print on that 20, because I think he might be having some fuel issues, but make sure you got some other cars other than the 20 with you. I'm not going. I mean, I'm running half throttle back here. And after running in the back for about two laps, he came on the radio and said, this is boring. I'm going <laughs> to head back toward the front. That's exactly what he's doing, Bill. Not boring now, Matt. And Marty Snyder was working on that story in the 20 pit, checking on their fuel situation. Marty? And Bill, what it was is when they, you know, here when you drop the jack, a lot of times you're not done with fueling the car. It takes very little time to take right side tires a little longer to get the 13 and a half gallons in the car. But when they dropped the jack, Tony went when they dropped the jack, instead of waiting on Greg Zipidelli to say, okay, go. So what happened is they're about half a gallon short on the fuel they should have. They have about 13 gallons in. It should not be a problem. They'll have to pit about a lap earlier than everybody else. Dave? Marty Elliott Sadler is a gallon short. They'll be in probably sooner than than most other cars. The reason is their crew chief saw that uh, there was an opening on pit road for Elliott to exit without hitting other cars. So he pulled in just a tick early before they were done fueling. Safety on pit road, over road fuel mileage at this point, guys. And a lot of times, you know, it depends. If you go, if you watch pit stops and they change to, you'll see that jack stays up until they get the fuel done. That's usually a driver's key to go is when the jack drops. 55 laps are complete. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads. There have been three caution-free races at Talladega. We've been caution-free through 55. NASCAR Next Talk Up Racing from Talladega brought to you by the Principal Financial Group. We'll give you an edge by Pizza Hut, home of the new Sicilian lasagna pizza. Go for the good stuff by UPS. Proud sponsor of Dale Jarrett's 88 Ford. Go Dale, go. And by Ford, bold moves. 59 laps are complete. Elliott Sadler trying to take the lead from Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I believe he's going to succeed. Well, for this lap anyway. Clint Boyer to pit road early. Dave? Bill, this is way too early, and what happened on their first stop was between crew chief Gil Martin and gas man Ron Liddell. There was miscommunication. They only got one can of fuel, and there was not a second can ready to go. And to keep him with the pack at that point, they sent him right back out. They'll take on two right side tires this time, and with this round of pit stops, they're likely to lose the pack. See, did you see the jack man that time staring at the gas man and the catch can guy intently? As soon as they saw fuel coming out of the tank, they nodded their head. He let the jack down. That was a signal to go. Elliott Sadler is going to head for pit road. And that's going to hurt depending on how much longer these guys stay out because if you run one lap without drafting help after you make a pit stop like Sadler is going to, he may lose the lead pack. I mean, that, because he's going to lose two seconds on the racetrack because he doesn't have anyone to draft with. Dave? Yeah, BP, on some tracks where you pit early and you short pit, you get the fresh tires. You can make, uh, you know, faster laps sooner. But here, it's all different with the draft. Elliott Sadler, we mentioned his problem a little bit earlier. They wanted to get him cleanly off pit road, so they sent him out early. He will take on no fresh tires, and this time they will get the 19 car full of fuel. That will save them time, though, not change. Well, no, it won't, because they had to fill it full of fuel anyway. That's right. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't take right sides. Okay, they are where they are. And Michael Waltrip also on pit road. But they, they're not even leaving together. Mike? Next time by, next time by. Someone said that uh, that's Tony Urey Jr. telling his cousin to tell Dale Earnhardt Jr. to pit next time by. And he wants to get down on the inside so yeah. we can get to yeah. pit road. Exactly. Marty. Bill, your pole sitter, David Gilliland, is on pit road, and the reason these guys are taking no tires are trying to get out as soon as they can. But I'm a little surprised with you guys of why they're not taking tires. You see, it still takes nine seconds to get it full of fuel. They certainly could have changed right side tires in that time. Well, Marty, why did you think they'd want to change rights twice and keep those lefts on there? Yeah. 
You think? Yep. I think you think if they're going to change two tires, these guys are going to change left? Yeah, because these tires are not wearing out. I mean, they, they said this track is so smooth, they're not having any tire issues. And here comes Junior, here comes his teammate, Martin Truex. Junior has to come all the way down to the turn one side of pit road to Alan Bestwick. Yeah, and you've got to make sure you don't get a speeding penalty. We saw what that did to Scott Riggs already. A right side tire change, fill it full of fuel, and you heard the instruction, make sure we push him off pit road. New concrete pit stalls here in Talladega with a lot of grip. They want to make sure they don't tear a rear end gear out trying to leave pit road at the end of a stop. Yeah, and the concrete helps that. The concrete, you can spin your tires. When it used to be asphalt in these pit lanes, there's a lot of broken axles, but the concrete helps you spin those tires and keeps you from breaking an axle sometimes. Earnhardt Jr. also had two teammates with him on pit road. The one of Truex and the 15 car. So they'll help Jr. get back up to speed. Marty? And now all the Ganassi cars come down pit road. The three of those will get a uh, will come on pit road. Reed Sorensen with two tires and the fuel to get another 35 laps or so out of the car. No changes to the chassis, Matt. Now right side tires for the 42. They told Casey, go on the cruise chief, Donnie Wingo. That way they can pack the fuel cell full of fuel. And the 49, he left his pit box with his gas can and it's on pit road. He wanted He'll to make sure he back. didn't run out, Matt. Well, they better hurry can... and get that because other cars gonna be it's... pitting. You've got a host of cars coming next time by, VP. The officials have it in their hands. Good. And here they come. There's the commitment line. 31 headed for you, Marty. And one thing you're noticing today, not a lot of chassis changes to these cars. The cars are handling so well, nobody really wants anything except tires for Jeff Burton. BP, you called it right. Left side tires for the championship leader. D uh, Dave? Left side tires for his teammate, Kevin Harvick. They also removed some tape on that first stop to cool it down just a little bit. Temperatures have been better for Harvick. Little slow on the left side. Now they're having oh, trouble. Cost them. Big time trouble. Got it full of fuel, but it cost them. I don't know they got it full of fuel, Dave. I didn't, I never saw the catch can guy indicate that it was full. And he's got to hurry up and try to get with this pack because he lost about five seconds right there. Here comes the next group. Jeff Gordon leads them onto pit road. Stewart's in there, Kyle Busch, Casey Kane. Kyle Busch is first, Marty. And he's been working a lot with his brother, Kurt Busch, out on the racetrack. It'll be left side tires for the five team and fuel to go about 35 more laps, Matt. You're seeing the drivers ease into their pit boxes. That way they don't flash spot the side of tires as Jeff Gordon leaves, but they didn't get the tear off all the way off the windshield. Left side tires for the 24. Marty? Denny Hamlin, second place driver in points, is going to come in. Right side tires and fuel on that 11 car. You see their signal is the crew chief to tell Denny on the radio it's time to go. And unless that blows off the 24 windshield, that is going to be aggravating for Jeff Gordon. Yeah, can you imagine sitting out there with that thing flapping yeah. in the breeze? And, well, and what happens is when you pull it halfway off, it could fold over and stick back on the windshield, and you may not be able to see out of half that windshield. Teammates Brian Vickers and Jimmy Johnson. They can't go to meetings together, but they can pit together. Alan? Brian Vickers and Jimmy Johnson pitting together. Vickers look for his crew to pull some tape off the nose of that car. His water temperature had gone to 280 degrees earlier when he was in the heavy traffic. So a four tire change here for Brian Vickers. Jimmy Johnson, you see pulling the tear off off the windshield. His car, his windshield, his view had gotten obscured by the leaking car that we showed you earlier. A four tire change here for Jimmy Johnson. Wow. Oh, and he stalls a car. He stalls a car. Yeah, he was moving in time to keep to catch the 25 car and stay with him. But after he stalled the engine, I'm not sure that Johnson can catch the 25. And the 25 can't wait for him. He's got to go or he's going to lose this pack. Matt Kenseth is the race leader in the 17 car. There he is in the middle of that pack. Right now, scoring has 22 cars on the lead lap. Those lights.
like Jeff Burton and Earnhardt Jr. basically are on the tail end of the lead lap. 17 can hit the race leader. But see, McMurray makes a pit stop, and the other Roush cars are hung on the racetrack. I don't. Here's Mark Martin, so at least he does have one of his Roush teammates to draft with once he finishes their pit stop. Matt. And the 26, but Murray's in. They're going to make the rotation of left side tires on this stop. Now watch the gas man and the catch cam man. Signifying it is full. You can see the catch cam man bobbing his head, so that way he can tell the crew chief they're good to go. Marty? Mark Martin following his teammate off of pit road. That's J.J. Yaley in the 18 car. And go, go, go. All right, Kenseth is down to the inside. But he's going to have to have Biffle or someone pit with him. 70, we're going to pit this time. Biffle's down on the bottom, too, there, BP. Just a couple cars back from the 17 car. So my guess is the 17, 16 will pit together. Running out of gas, Robbie. Starting to run out of here. Starting to run out of fuel. Okay, now if he runs out of gas before he gets a pit entrance, he's going to lose a lap, if not more. Earnhardt Jr. dives to the inside. And if the car stalls as he's coming down a pit lane, these cars are terrible to try to start, restart when you're running out of gas. And he won't know his pit road speed. And he won't know his pit road speed. Oh, here he comes, guys. Right side to the golf. Three rash cars. Hey, let me talk. I know where you're at. I'm out of gas here. I'm out of gas. Can I get some gas in it quick? Marty. They're lucky, Bill, they're on this end of pit road because Matt is barely able to keep the car running. You can hear him working with the throttle, trying to keep the car running. As long as it was running, when he hit pit road, they were going to take two tires that kept it running, and now they go pit road, Dave. Greg Biffle's car was still under power. They will take on right side tires, and please get that car full of fuel. Seems to be a recurring theme. Looks like they will. Alan. Left side tires this time for Carl Edwards, told to wait on the crew chief, Wally Brown, to call that the fuel was full. There he goes. And the three teammates come off of pit road together. Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. at the front of this pack. Okay, now, the 48 stalled. Had somebody to leave the pit with, he had Vickers. He, he stalled the car when he left pit lane. He lost Vickers. And he now runs in 36th spot, and he's all by himself. And every single lap, he's fallen further and further behind that pack. He ran a 50.1 the last lap, and these guys are running 49s. You know, this is something I've been concerned about. Toward the left rear quarter panel up. Be ready, guys. Is a left rear tire. I'm not sure that. Caution is out. Go ahead, BP. I'm not sure if the tire came apart. He ran. I heard him say something about debris. Maybe he ran over something. But in the truck race yesterday and in the ARCA race Friday night, some left rear tires blew. Well, that's a big break. Whatever happened, that's a big break for Jimmy Johnson and guys like that that lost his pack because of uh, mistakes on pit lane. Though you see the debris on the track. Caution is out for the first time here at Talladega. Now then, Wally, you think these guys, there's no point in pitting again, is there? Or do you think some of these guys come in and get those four tires? I, I think they would and set it up for later, only two. If, if they change or left they sides any. now, they probably would not change left sides the rest again. of the day. Right. So the three Roush teammates that pitted together lead. Biffle, Edwards, and Kenseth. Then it's Gordon, McMurray, Elliott, Sadler in sixth. Earnhardt Jr. is seventh. Mark Martin is eighth. Then Truex Jr. and Robbie Gordon, the top ten. Kyle Busch runs in the 11th spot. Another chaser, Casey Kane, is back in 16th. Jeff Burton, the championship leader, in 18th. Denny Hamlin is 23rd. Kevin Harvick is 25th. Jimmy Johnson, 35th. As Wally pointed out, a huge break with this caution because he was all by himself. Watch the 22 car on the left-hand side of your screen there. We see that left rear start coming apart and the damage that it does to the quarter panel. 
Is he up on the inner liner there? Yeah, if it wasn't for the inner liner, he would have wrecked. Sure looks like Biffle's going to stay out there and Carl Edwards. I think if Kessis came in, everybody else would follow him. Pit road is open. Here they come. Mm. So, Marty, back to you. Come on, come on, come on. You must be wired directly to Matt Kenseth's radio because as soon as you said that, Wally, he came to pit road. It's going to be fuel only, no tires, Matt. Jeff Gordon eases into his box. Caleb Hurd engages the fuel can just to top it off. Dave. Matt, Whoa. big break for Kevin Harvick. Go ahead, Wally. Go ahead, Dave. Well, the 29 car had, did not get it full of fuel last time in a big way. So we're going to take four this time, then get it full. Allen. Left side tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. It had been nine laps since he hit it with the small fuel cells they're using. Got to come in and take fuel where Carl Edwards, who stayed on the track, had just been in. All kinds of stuff happening there. It's pretty exciting, too. As Casey Mears got your attention. Yeah, the 42 Casey car sliding. Slide in there almost into Jeff Gordon. And Jimmy Johnson and the one car, Mark Truex Jr., pretty close to making contact on pit road as yeah. Truex was leaving. Not Johnson just getting there. Sure, if Robbie Gordon missed his pit because of getting uh, crossed up with Michael Walter. And that was another disadvantage from him having the problem earlier because when he was trying to pull into his pit stall, other guys were already leaving. Under caution for the first time here at the Talladega Super Speedway in the UAW Ford 500, you're watching NASCAR on NBC. Here's today's Wrangler five-star finish. Guess what? Dale Earnhardt Jr., Talladega, October 21st, 2001. Made the last lap pass, and Bobby Labonte got caught up in the big one. The win was the first of four consecutive victories for Junior. It also started a string of seven straight top two finishes at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins at Talladega, our Wrangler five-star finish. First four cars, Biffle Edwards, Sterling Marlin, did not pit. First three cars didn't pit. Here's some of the pit road fun. Yeah, it, this is what I was oohing about, Dave. Casey Mears can smoke and buy his pit. There's uh, Robbie Gordon in the seven car trying to get to his pit, but the 55 was in his way. And these guys are all real lucky it happened under yellow or they would have been in big trouble. As we get ready for the restart here at Talladega, Coke invites you to drink it down and start it up. Biffle Edward Sterling Marlin did not pit. And it's Kenseth, Gordon, Kyle Busch, Jamie McMurray. 37 cars on the lead lap. J.J. Yaley was the lucky dog. Wow, that was a pretty strung out restart. Look at some of those guys way in the back there. We may wind up with two separate packs here. Yeah, if that first group of six could go. Yeah. Get in line and go. And, and that's what you want to do. I talked about that earlier. When, when you're driving at this place, what you'd like to do is be in that lead pack. Sometimes it's five, six cars. Sometimes it's ten cars. And they'll normally get in single file and just ride because they know that's the safest thing to do for a while. Just log some laps, run single file, let those guys get three and four abreast behind you. Breaks in that ten car on the outside of Gordon, the first car lap down. Evidently, the 10 car has some problems because he's a pretty fast race car, and I thought he might be able to keep in this lead draft and try to be the lucky dog in case we get another caution flag. But, uh, well, so much for the single file to get away from the pack. Biffle in the 16. Here comes Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. Teammate of Biffle goes with Gordon. The 24 car is fast, isn't he? How about it, Matt? Well, Bill, we've seen a couple of instances so far where mistakes on pit road can really turn your day upside down, and it almost happened for Jeff Gordon. Steve Latar told him as he was on his way down pit road, said, we're only going to go fuel only, but be very careful on your exit so we don't make contact with somebody. And he almost did with the 42 of Mears, which then messed up his day because instead of fuel only, they had to go ahead and take four tires. Yeah, because he flat spotted those tires. He was hard on the brakes, had the tires locked up. 
flat spotted them, so then they were forced to change tires. Restarted about 29th, Casey Mears did. Although that may not be a terrible thing. I mean, having four tires on at this part of the race is not, not all that terrible. That would have been a green flag pit stop. Could have been all done. Brand new racing surface here. A lot of talk about it this week. We asked Carl Edwards his opinion. I believe it'll make it um, make it possible for guys to put their cars in spaces where maybe they couldn't before, which is <laughs> it's going to be wild. But uh, but it also I think will give you a better ability to you know save the car and make little changes you know in their line and stuff without having to deal with the bumps and things. So. I guess what I'm saying is it will allow guys to drive their cars closer together and have more control, but since we're all racers, we'll push the envelope and we'll probably be right in the same boat we were. In the eye of the storm, right now, next to points leader Jeff Burke appears to be in the eye of the storm, and Junior tries to go on the inside of Jeff Gordon. There are three wide now in turn three. Mark Martin has made his way inside the top ten, runs in that outside lane in that six car. Had 25 lead changes in the first 77 laps. Most ever lead changes, 75. It was in May of 1984. On board with Junior. And he's in the corner looking stairwell. I mean, it's just amazing how how smooth this racetrack is. When I was out on it yesterday, it was just unbelievable. You just don't work the wheel as much as you do. Now, again, when you're in traffic, you're still going to be chasing the car around just because of the draft and what the air does to these cars. But normally, you're chasing the car around when you're out there by yourself because it was so bumpy. So you and Sterling Sharp, you're tight now, right? Yeah. Good co-driver. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of right side weight there, wasn't there? A lot of right side weight. <laughs> These guys are in a big pack right here, and they need the whole racetrack right now. But you know these guys are driving like gentlemen now, because we haven't reached halfway. <laughs> you know, we're, we're about 200 miles in. You're going to paint thing. us a picture here, aren't you? I'm telling you what, from about mile 350 <laughs> to the end of the race, they will stop being gentlemen. They'll become hogs, absolute hogs. So right now it's all give, and later on it becomes all take. Okay. The mirrors will be used a lot more. You me. Denny Hamlin, one of the 10 drivers in the chase for the next Hell Cup. Start of the day second in the championship standings. Right now he's fifth. Following Mike Wallace in the 09 car. Uh-oh. Issues for Elliott Sadler. Looks like maybe he's got a flat right rear. Looks that way. Dave? Elliot's words, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. It might be a flat tire. So they're going to change four tires first and see if that helps the situation. That's a right rear, Dave, for sure. OK, right rear for sure. Then, and I believe that was the only thing wrong with the car at that point. And they will go ahead and take care of it. Elliot showing a little damage on the left side, a tire mark. But uh, this is going to damage his day even more. Yeah, because he's going to be hung on the out on the racetrack by himself, no drafting help. He'll be two seconds a lap slower than Jeff Gordon, the leader, and be lapped before you know it. Well, actually, he's already, yeah, he's he's already lapped. lapped, and there's already three guys at least one <laughs> lap down, so he's not even going to be in a group to be the lucky dog. Gordon and Earnhardt Jr. leading the pack at Talladega. Whoa. Boy. Wild ride. 82 laps are complete. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. NASCAR Nextel Cup Racing from Talladega brought to you by FedEx. Every day is race day. By Nextel, only from Sprint. Get closer to the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series with Nextel. By Star Motorcycle, we build it, you make it your own. And by Napa, Napa Auto Parts. Napa, get the good stuff. Still under green here at Talladega. 85 laps are complete. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. Followed closely by his teammate in the five-car, Kyle Busch. And Kyle has his brother, Kurt, behind him, who has his teammate, Ryan Newman. Meanwhile, Junior, the eight car, is Greg Biffle behind him as they try to push their way oh, toward the front. I had an optical delusion there. I thought the five car was sideways. 
Started with a rookie on the pole, his first race at Talladega, David Gilliland. He runs back about the 23rd spot. Here's our DLP race back. The pole sitter has just one win in the last 21 next Cup Cup races at Talladega. But David did a good job getting the race started. Gordon, Earnhardt, Bush, Biffle, Bush, Newman. Carl Edwards in that outside lane. Mark Martin's worked up his way up there behind one of his teammates, Matt. Running in about the fifth row, Bill. Now you may see the sixth car just duck out a little bit to try to get some fresh air. Mark and the spotter thinks there may be some debris on the grill. He says the water temperature is climbing. If it doesn't help by ducking out, he's going to slowly fade to the back where he was running before to try to cool that engine out. It's just not spitting out any water yet. Yet. Marty? And you'll see a little bit of the same thing from his good friend Jeff Burton, that 31 orange car, the singular car. He'll duck out of line just like his uh, old friend Mark Martin because the water temperature at one point was at 240 to 250. And I believe, Wally, you saw him spitting out some water a little bit earlier. That's a concern. 240 on the water, not too bad, as long as you can cool it down every once in a while. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's losing any right now, Marty. He was earlier. But uh, yeah, you're right. 240's okay as long as it's not pushing water. Kyle Busch trying to push his teammate Jeff Gordon while well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. watches. Alan uh, watches his water temperature gauge as well, Bill. All of a sudden down this, the turn one end of pit road, I've got about three cars, now make it four cars, all reporting elevated water temperatures at this stage of the race. Marty? Kyle Busch tried to push Jeff Gordon to the lead, and he did that. Uh, Kyle's got an awfully fast race car, but working well with his brother, Kurt Busch, behind him. Now he has Ryan Newman behind him. But Kyle's saying the low line, just not going like that high line is, Matt. And Jeff Gordon just said to his team on the radio, you need to tell Kyle he needs to duck in with me because the eight is probably the best car out there. If he wants to run with the best car, he needs to get with us. A.B.? And uh, Matt, I'll take it on the 16 car. Greg Biffle stayed out last time, did not come to pit road, check with Doug Richard, just, make, just to make sure everything was okay. They had just pitted under green, which was within one of their pit windows that they wanted to keep for the day, and uh, there was no need to come in again. As you guys have already mentioned, tire wear very good, so the 16, very comfortable staying out on this last car. But that could bite him on fuel mileage. By just a lap, I don't know, Bill. Yeah. We'll see how it plays out. You're right. You want to stay in your window, but you want to try and get every advantage you can. Just yet, you can't come in and go out by yourself. Right. See, the one advantage that Biffle and the other Roush cars have with that Yates Roush engine, they were able to run 37 laps before they stopped. The Chevrolets and Dodges, they stopped at about 33, 34. Kyle Busch led the last lap. Jeff Gordon has led the most, 26 so far. Gordon has led the most laps five times here at Talladega. 200 cars out front. He's got to be delighted <laughs> to see his cars running up there second and third at this point in the race. Roger hasn't had that much success at this race. Uh, and, and we're stricter plate races. I mean, he's had some top fives, but hasn't made the trip to victory lane. Now, who do you go with, your teammate or your brother? Who do you stay with? That's a tough situation. <laughs> Update on Carl Edwards from Allen. Yeah, Bill, when you watch Carl Edwards in these shots running that high lane, sometimes you're going to see him pop out of line higher than the cars he's around. He's trying to get some air into the radiator on that car. His water temperature at 250 degrees now, so when he gets into the corners and sometimes in the tri-oval, you'll see him move a little bit wider than Greg Biffle, his teammate, that he's following. Gordon Earnhardt Jr. Side by side for the lead at Talladega. Not for long. Gonna be a battle up front all day. A lot of traffic behind him. See how it plays out. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Just past halfway here at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, Jamie McMurray led last time by and still leads now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. drifts up the track. And Mike Wallace has brought that 09 car up to the second position. Actually pushed McMurray 26 to the lead.
Jeff Gordon runs second in that inside, in that middle lane. His teammate Brian Vickers in the inside lane. And Mike Wallace talked about the 09 car. He took a lick last night in the Craftsman Truck Series about as hard as I've seen in a long, long time. Marty? Yeah, VP, I talked to Mike about that this morning, and he said he's driving with a little bit of anger today. He said, you know, I was running third in that race last lap, thought I had a top five going, and all of a sudden I got wrecked from the middle of nowhere. He said, I'm a little angry about what happened yesterday, so today I'm driving a little bit mad. I might, you might see me up front quite a bit. Well, he's going to get shuffled now. He's out. He's hung out with no one in front of him and, and really no one behind him. Yeah, we got a bunch of guys up on the high side that got a really good run. Well wide. Hmm. Man, that was a storm of brewing there. Yeah, they got, they got a little mixed up there. Trying to sort it all out. McMurray continues to lead. Allen? Uh, Bill wasn't all that long ago. Brian Vickers in the 25. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. We're running way at the back of the lead pack. Vickers came on his radio, said something to the effect of, it was time to try and go to the front. He and Jimmy Johnson have made their way to the front. Right now, second and third. Strong cars. Let's see. Kenseth is in there. Burton. Earnhardt Jr. Gordon. Kyle Busch is in that mix. Some of the guys in the chase. Top six or seven trying to break away. Kurt Busch Apple. trying to hold on to the front of that pack. I thought there was going to be contact between the 8 and 17. I wouldn't be surprised if they leaned on each other. BP, that was pretty close. Junior in the eight, looking forward at Matt Kenseth in the 17. There's Gordon in the 24. And you're really helpless when you're in this position right here in the middle. Yeah, I mean, you've got nowhere to go. You've got guys in front of you, behind you, to the right, to the left. So you just got to hope that maybe your line goes and you start punching the guy in front of you and help that line go. Does he have to be punching the guy in front of him, too? Yes, like up here. <laughs> McMurray continues to lead, just past halfway at Talladega. Field coming around to complete lap 103 here at Talladega. Jamie McMurray continues to lead on board with Jeff Burton, looking back at Jeff Gordon. Pay off our singular race call question right here. Which driver will be will win a restrictor plate race first? Kevin Harvick. That's interesting. I, I was interested to see how the, the fans would vote on that because I thought it would be pretty even. Harvick, the big winner. Oh, Junior. Problems. He's, he's got left front flat tire. So Dale Earnhardt Jr., one of the drivers in the chase for the next Hell Cup, a five-time winner here at Talladega, off the Slow pace. Down, Junior. He's got the key defender on it. Yeah, 10 four. This happening at lap 103. Right a few laps ago, we heard him say something about down in turn one and two, so maybe needing that's some adjustment. Down here three and four. I just mentioned he saw debris in one and two that he may have run over. Junior all by himself, making the long trip to pit road. And he's got to go slow, like they warned him. Don't go too fast. If you tear that left front of tire apart, it will do the same thing to the left front fender it did to Blaney's left rear. And he may have felt that going down, because he mentioned earlier about we need to make an adjustment in the front. I believe that tire was leaking for about two or three laps, and he was losing the handle, and he, that's why he said we need an adjustment. Field roars by as Junior heads for his pit stall. Allen? Bill, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s teammate, Martin Truex Jr., on the last pit stop, found that his left rear tire was slowly going flat. They got a break. They caught it. This one has bitten Dale Earnhardt Jr. as the left front went down on his car. Now what they need is for this thing to stay green through a cycle of pit stops, another 10 laps or so, get it back close to the lead lap, and then see how the rest of the race plays out. Yeah, if it can stay green for easily 10 laps, and Junior get back on the lead lap, then the caution play come out to be okay. A lot of ifs there, though. A lot of hoping. Oh, 
Hoping and wishing. 105 laps are complete. Approaching another round of green flag pit stops if the yellow does not come out. Matt Kenseth and Dale Earnhardt Jr. were running near the front of the field, but on lap 101, they both got out of line, slipped to the back, and fell to 22nd and 23rd. And Jeff Burton losing a lot of positions. He's hung on the outside with no one in front of him. And without that drafting help, you just can't go. And Mark Martin, it's like he was going to the outside. Oh. Report from Pitt Road, the race leaders coming in about two laps. Racetrack. David Gilliland, pole winner on pit road, making a pit stop. Like fuel only. See a lot of guys waving their hands right now, so expect we'll see some of these cars hit pit road this lap. Remember Vickers and his teammate Jimmy Johnson hit it together earlier in the race. Have to be so careful here. The leaders stay out, but guys a little deeper in the field coming to pit road, including Jeff Gordon. That's Casey Mears, David Stremme. There's Casey Kane headed for his pit stall. He's headed for you, Matt. Casey Kane stalled the car on his last stop. They took left side tires. They had to push the car to get it to fire. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon still has the tear off halfway off on that right side of the window. Caleb Hurst has the fuel cell full of fuel. Gordon said the outside lane was working. Then all of a sudden, it just quit, and he got shuffled back. Scott Riggs. Robbie Gordon. Now this next lap, we'll see a lot more of the leaders making a pit stop. Yeah, there's several of them. Including Vickers, Johnson, Hamlin. Vickers giving up the race lead. There's Kevin Harvick in the 29 car. Harvick's headed for you, Dave. And he's been just hanging out there, not really pushing it too much at this point. Temperature's back to normal for Kevin. They're going to take on right side tires and fuel, Matt. Small wedge adjustment, left side tires for a bush. He was just trying to not get caught up in somebody else's mess. He said it was getting a little crazy out there. Amy? Just right side tires from Brian Vickers, who pitted from the race lead. His teammate Jimmy Johnson will get rights only as well, as did Denny Hamlin. These cars have to stay below that yellow line till they get, get to the back stretch. Here comes another group. Oh, look at Ryan Newman. Smoke that right front. Get the tires real bad. Yep, so they're going to have to change those tires now. Marty, Kyle Busch coming to pit road, ran up front for most of the day. To, uh, they're going to get a tear off on the windshield. Matt Kenneth behind him. It'll be left side tires for the 17, right side tires for Kyle Busch. Just in front of him, they leave pit road at the same time, Dave. Greg Biffle will take on left side tires. They'll also make a wedge adjustment for Greg's car, trying to get the handling just a little bit better. Waiting on the fuel, waiting, waiting. He's gone. Marty. Jeff Burton leaving pit road, guys, and they wanted right side tires this time for Burton. They were a little concerned about the water temperature. A bigger concern for Jeff Burton when he gets hit in the draft, bump drafted, if you will. He's hitting the rev limiter hard. He switched to box two, which has a higher rev limiter, which will allow him to run more RPM. Mark Martin headed for pit road. Matt has Mark's pit today. Bill, they are counting him down, looking for debris on the grill. There is nothing. Mark, one of the drivers complaining about the water temperature had climbed. Mark went to victory lane yesterday in the Craftsman Truck Series, and so now he's won here in IROC, ARCA, Trucks, Bush, and Nextel Cup on two separate occasions. They slipped the jack. Whoa. Oh. The car was rolling when the jack was still underneath it, and it actually rolled the jack over, did a little damage right there to that right side skirt. Mark did stay out and lead a lap, so he got the five bonus points. Here's what Wally was watching. 
Throws to Jack under. See, it's already rolling, BP. The car rolled a little bit there. The Jack's already twisted. And now it's rolling and rolling, and now it finally finishes it off. I think that Mark just took his foot off the brake to get ready to accelerate and let the clutch out, and the car just rolled a little bit on him. Here come a few of his friends. Yeah, about 25 of them. Vickers leads the pack. See Jimmy Johnson in there, Denny Hamlin, Jeff Gordon. Chasers running up near the front. Brian Vickers hunting his first career Nextel Cup win under Green at Talladega. 115 laps complete at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in front of this pack, but he is not the race leader. He's 36th and about to get lapped. Had to make an unscheduled pit stop. Now, if he can stay there, obviously he would get the lucky dog if the yellow were to come out. So he needs to really stay up with this lead pack if possible. And Earnhardt Jr. knew that pack was coming. He was talking to his crew about it. Peter's at the start finish line now. Hey, right, I'll see if I can run a little harder. <laughs> At this point, I just kind of let you know where, how far ahead we are of them right now. Maybe we can get a break. I don't know. I know. I just make it joke. That's why it's time to think right here. You know, riding around the racetrack by yourself, that 51 flat, and you got plenty of time you to You really think. do. It's the most boring thing in the world. <laughs> People, you, even though you're running 190 miles per hour, it's so easy to do at a place like this when you're by yourself. But now when you're in this pack, it's a whole different story. And it also shows how Earnhardt Jr. and his team, how they've matured because he's making, you know, trying to make light of a bad situation, and that's good leadership from the driver, trying to keep his guys loose. And now we saw Earnhardt Jr. have the tire problem, but there were other things going on when that tire went down. Yeah, actually, he was, you know, he did that. He obviously did it in front of some cars, and J.J. Yaley in the 18 car had to check up. He checked up, went up the racetrack, and the 21 of Kenny Schrader ran into him. Then they got tagged by Tony Raines in the 96. Here's Schrader. Really gave Yaley a pretty good pop there. I'm surprised both those guys didn't spin out. It really is amazing that we didn't have a crash because we can see the damage to that 21 car. Yeah, and, and, and poor Schrader, I mean, he's running three seconds, four seconds slower than, than the pack with that damage. So it's just going to be a long day for him, Matt, for the rest of the day. And Jeff Gordon just commented on how the eight of Junior just pulled away from the whole pack with the 25 of Vickers. The one comment that he did make, he said to his spot. All the way around the track, just the strap, strap that was legal all in the corner. <laughs> He did say to his spotter, tell the 48, meaning his uh, teammate, Jimmy Johnson, if I can help him, I will. I just can't run in the outside lane. It just bogs me down. If I leave the middle, I'm in trouble. Can't bump, bump trap through the turns, can you, BP? Yeah, NASCAR, have, <laughs> they have no bump zones. In the middle of the corner, they have observers that watch these cars. If you go up and bump another car in front of you, you will be penalized by NASCAR. This is what it looks like when you run in the middle of the pack <laughs> at a buck 97, buck 98. And you watch these cars moving around. They're not driving them around. That's what the air is doing to these cars. So these cars float a lot in the corners. That's all just the air swirling around off these other cars and it affects your car. And you're constantly correcting the steering wheel. It doesn't get much closer racing than Talladega. Well, I think the surface is a hit. It, the hurt, it is, and, and you know, if you can run this way and everybody respects each other, like BP said, it's gonna get a little bit different later in the race, but it's a lot of fun to do this when you're running with guys that you trust and everybody is given and, and taken. But later on, BP, you're right, it, it, it'll be all take. Ryan Vickers out in front of this pack leaving Hendrick Motorsports at the end of the season, wants to get his owner and his team to victory lane. Can he get his first win at Talladega? We'll know in about 68 laps. 
124 laps now complete at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Jeff Gordon is the race leader. And there's a pack of about 30 cars right around him. Matt Kenseth, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. is not on the lead lap. Jr. is one lap down. And right now, he'd be racing Dale Jarrett for the lucky dog, and Jr. would have it. Jr. made an unscheduled stop for a flat left side tire. Check that draft out. Jeff Gordon, who is leading the race, has no one to help him, and he's now back to about 18th position in a, in a half a lap. And he talked about that in the, on the countdown to green last week at Kansas. He said, I don't have any friends when we go restrictor plate racing. I have to rely on my teammates to help me because no one really likes to help me because he runs so strong at these tracks. From last time by, he was leading. This time by, he's going to go back to about... Back to the third again. 23rd, oops, make that 27th. And that's what he said, from the back, from the front to the back again. Most consecutive laps led by one driver today, Jeff Gordon, 10. Normally we take you through the field. Here we'll take you around the field. Start with the 17 car, Snyder. And Bill, that 17 car is so strong in parts of the race, especially on the bottom line, working with his old teammate, Kurt Busch. He has five bonus points from earlier in the race when he led a lap. The car is excellent. Trying to find some teammates, one of those, or some friends, one of those was Dale Earnhardt Jr. He would like for him to get back on the lead lap, Dave. And just a lap ago, the 29 of Kevin Harvick was behind the 17. Kevin's made his way forward thanks to drafting off his teammate, Clint Boyer, who would like to lead a lap, hasn't done that today, has finally found his way to the front of the pack. Alan? Well, we just documented the Dale Earnhardt Jr. flat tire from a little while ago that cost him a lap. Remember that the key car to watch while you're watching the eight is the double eight, the 88 of Dale Jarrett. That's who Jr. is racing if a caution comes out to get the lucky dog and get back on the lead lap. But I can tell you, if he gets back on the lead lap, that's going to disappoint a lot of the guys racing out there right now. Jimmy Johnson fell as far back as 34th earlier in the race, has not said a whole lot on the radio lately except that his car's comfortable. He's running sixth, at least last time by. Marty? Jeff Burton made a fun move just a little while ago, uh, Alan, on moving to the outside lane. He's been working with Tony Stewart here in this part of the race again. Oh, he's on ignition box number two, which gives him more RPMs. These guys have finished back-to-back -to -back top fives, and believe it or not, as good as the 31 team has been this year, it's the first time all year long they have back-to-back -to -back top five finishes, Alan. Denny Hamlin's one of the drivers trying to figure out what lane his car is going to work best in to try and move to the front. Right now, he's in the middle lane. He said on the radio earlier that the middle lane seems to be a good place to run, but he thinks if you're going to pick up positions, you're going to need to be in the outside lane. He's not there right now. In scoring, Casey Kane in the nine. He's 13th on the bottom. He's been running the bottom and the middle. He tried the top, it just didn't quite seem to work as well, but he's been shuffled around. Everham never won a plate race yet. They're hoping to break through today and also try to give him a boost in the points. He came in here 10. Snyder? Kyle Busch was saying earlier this would be a great race if everybody would quit side drafting. He says they're moving around too much on the racetrack. Let's stay in line. Let's race together. Kyle Busch has had a very good car run up front for most of the day. Now he's back in 19th, but knows he has the muscle to get back up front, Matt. And Mark Martin, he pitted last on lap 110. He was in the latter half of the window of the cars that pitted the last time. Now he's on the outside said nothing about the race car. They took right side tires the last time. Two times he's gone to victory lane here in Nextel Cup. Meanwhile, the 24, Jeff Gordon, not making a whole lot of headway. Fell all the way back to 27th. As you heard him say in the radio, he'll go from the back to the front, the back to the front, and he'll try it again. The 10 drivers in the chase for the Nextel Cup championship and where they're running at Talladega. But it changes in a heartbeat here. Yeah, these guys... You can see they're starting to get more and more antsy. They're starting to build a lot more erratic moves now, later as we get into the race. Had just one caution flag for a couple of laps for a shredded tire. Caution is out now. Debris. That will put Junior back on the lead lap. Well, the drivers won't like it, but the fans might be happy. This might would. be the hit of the day. Most <laughs> of them are very happy. Oh, yeah. A lot of red down there. Lots of red. And we realize that Alabama uses a maroon <laughs> jersey, but I still think that most of it is Dale Earnhardt Jr. shirts. There were a lot of them here this morning. 
So the pace car will catch the field. Matt Kenseth was the leader last time by. They'll be coming to pit road. We'll come back for stops. Field just coming off of turn four. Pit road will be open this time. You cannot make it to the finish from here, but it might be your last crack at making any kind of adjustment or getting four tires. We'll see how it plays out. Clint Boyer, the race leader, to Marty Snyder and Matt Kenseth stop. And they debated on fuel only, but Matt Kenseth actually vetoed that, said, I want right side tires. If we're going to take the time to get the fuel, give me the right side tires and a tear off, Matt. Kurt Busch trying to get Roger Penske his first restrictor plate points, paying victory. Right side tires only, and he stalls the car, trying to leave to get around the nine crew members, Dave. 29 car of Kevin Harvick is going to make a chassis adjustment, wedge adjustment. They're going to take four tires now to set him up for a two tire stop later. Alan? And a uh, two-tire pit stop for Carl Edwards in the 99 car. You see just the right side. They're looking to take a little piece of tape off the nose because their water temperature has been a little high. Brian Vickers with a four-tire change in front of him in the 25. Check Jimmy that Johnson. out. Yep. Jimmy Johnson picked up 13 positions. So my guess is gas only, huh? Yep, a variety of strategies. Fuel only, two tires, some guys with four tires. Setting up the last 57 laps at Talladega. There's Todd Foster, rear tire changer Tony Stewart. It's off, tight five lug nuts. It's done, back across the wall, left sides. Tony gets four. Excitement in the pre-race ceremonies. The crews, 43 of them up and down pit road. Getting ready for the green flag. Then on lap 40, Dale Earnhardt Jr. You could hear the fans roar from Tuscaloosa. He made his way to the front. Kevin Harvick making his stop on pit road. Waiting on fuel, waiting on fuel. Jimmy Johnson trying to get into his pit stall. After he'd lost ground on a previous pit stop, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Cutting down a left front. Trying to make sure he stays out of traffic. Got that back to pit road. Just got the lucky dog back on the lead lap in the 31st position. Championship contender Mark Martin. Right side tires, and I like that. Mark Martin pulls close to the wall so the guys don't have to run, take an extra step. Good move, might save a tenth of a second. But then roll off the jack. The Jackman had to yank that thing out of there. Now that cost two tenths of a second, so he lost. Our DLP race recap. Among the teams that got four tires, Harvick, Gilliland, Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson, Brian Vickers. Green flag, green flag. I think that's a good move. If this thing stays green, then those guys only have to come in, get a splash of gas, and go, and they're going to be on better tires than everybody else, BP. I agree with you. I think four tires was the right call. Clint Boyer is being pushed by the 17 car. Matt Kenseth, as they try to get away from the field, for a second they had Bobby Labonte, a lap car in the 43, between themselves in third place, but that vanished quickly. Denny Hamlin also took four tires. Want to point out that our race off of pit road that we showed you earlier after these pit stops was incorrect. Jimmy Johnson did not pick up 13 positions. There was a computer scoring error. He took four tires on his stop. The dog gone. I was impressed. Boy, Boyer losing a lot of ground in one lap. There he is right there. He was in first and comes around that lap in 10th spot. See Kyle Busch in the five car swinging up high around the 12 with Ryan Newman. Update on the race leader, Matt Kenseth from Marty. And the 17 is awfully good today, Bill. When he came off pit road, he said, guys, that was an excellent two-tire stop. That may have been the, one of the best you've ever done. The 17 has some pretty good stops on their resume. I talked to Robbie Reiser about the two tires. He said, we have seen zero tire wear today at all. So I don't think two tires are going to hurt us here at all. In fact, they may take none for the rest of the day. The tire wear has been virtually nothing today. See how it all plays out. That's pretty good when you run this fast, have no tire trouble and no wear. Really amazing. On new surface. Yeah. 
BP approaching 52 to go. Are we making the shift from give to take? Yeah. We're slowly starting to make that transition. Wow. Matt? You know, the former teammates, Kurt Busch and Matt Kenseth, working well together. In fact, over the last caution, they passed a message to Kurt from Matt that said, thank you for the help. I needed it. We'll do more of the same. And they are on the two-tire strategy as well. Left side tires have about 20 laps on them, so that way they feel like the, the final stop fuel only. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon, he went the opposite direction in the 24. Four tires, so they can go no tires on their final stop. Just fuel, quick splash of fuel only. Mark, Mark Martin, Martin. Yeah. that six card. Oh, oh there we go. go. Casey Mears, McMurray, and from Jeff Gordon. Huge pack. Yeah, that's Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon is in it. Martin Truex Jr. in the one. Gordon just got hit again. Oh, man. Good. Real hard, buddy. I didn't see it at all. Yeah. I guess Junior's back there in the middle of that, too, wasn't he? Yes. Denny Hamlin, Denny Hamlin, 11 car. Yep. See Clint Boyer, 07, trying to drive away. Well, we keep talking about the big one. This was it. Looks like there's Boyer. Oh, that started way up high. Who was that at way up high? Is that Carl in 99? Looks like it. Have to get another look. That started from way up on the outside of the wall. Like Harvick, was Harvick right in front of that? He would get up. Well, it's going to be tough to see from that shot, here. too. Now, Harvick goes high and just gets tagged by Gordon. Some of these cars have already made it back to pit road. It looks like it, it's Carl Edwards. Now, I don't know if Carl got tagged, but he got loose like he got hit. And he, he turned to the left. When he turned to the left, he went down the racetrack and hit whoever was to the left of him. Which is Casey Mears, I believe, in 42. Watch 99 on the left. Now, you're not going to be able to see Clear it from this there. shot. Three wide. Inside, four wide. Trouble. That's camera deep getting hit right there. Dave Burns. Left side damage, Bill, on the 29 car. A little bit on the front end, mostly on the door of Kevin's car. They're going to pound it out just a little bit on the left front. But it's not as bad in the front as we may have thought. But the side, there's still, you know, wind that needs to, air that needs to go down the side. So Kevin's car will definitely not be what it was earlier. Alan. Most of the damage to Denny Hamlin's car concentrated on the fenders at the corners on the right side. Denny saying to the team he didn't think that the wheels were hit at all in any of the contact. So right now, the uh, crew chief, Chris Gillen, the car chief rather, under the right rear of the car looking at the damage there. And they're checking out the right front fender as well. Matt. Now the 26 of Jimmy McMurray has already come back to the garage. Jeff Gordon's team is awaiting his arrival back here. Gordon on the radio trying to diagnose to his team how bad in what areas are damaged. He says, we are just dragging a ton of stuff. They're trying to bring a sway bar arm from the pit box, trying to get all the different parts ready. They've got a crash station back here, ready to go as soon as the 24 gets back here. Marty? Well, Matt Kendis comes to pit road. Matt, he's going to take on some tires here. They're also going to take on fuel. They didn't know if they can make it all the way from here. They obviously cannot make it all the way from here, so they'll have to pit again, Matt. And the six of Mark Martin in for service. Looks like fuel only there for uh, the six. Allen? Uh, watching, well, actually, I'm headed in opposite directions here. Okay. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson are pitted at opposite ends of the pit road here. And we're going to check out the damage on both cars. Uh, Jimmy Johnson leaving pit road now. We'll get an update there in just a second. Johnson's cool. car looked pretty clean from here, Allen. Taking a look at it right now. Well, Junior must have been in front of that accident because I never saw him anywhere in the back. There's one way to find out, BP. How's that? Let's go on board with Junior. That well, looked pretty clean by that shot, too. So if he got hit, he maybe got hit in the back a little bit. Denny Hamlin right in front of him. He was in the Stay high, Junior. Stay high. Stay high. 
was good, right through the middle. How about that? He stopped. Remember that when this checkered flag falls at Homestead. That's great, great work by Earnhardt. This is on board with Denny Hamlin. Not quite as fortunate. NASCAR Next Talk Up Racing from Talladega is brought to you by Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. By UPS, proud sponsor of Dale Jarrett's 88.4, Go Dale Go. By DirecTV, there's good TV, then there's better TV, then there's DirecTV. And by Wrangler. To Matt Yoakum. Bill, back in the garage, Jeff Gordon watching as his team tries to fix this race car. Tell us what happened from your vantage point, Jeff. I just saw up ahead of me uh, some guys, you know, I don't know if, you know, if you know, they just ran out of room or what, but up ahead of me, the five and somebody else, yeah, got together, it looks like the two. Uh, and then, you know, once that started happening, they all just started checking up. And, and then it just came all the way back to me. I, I thought I was going to miss it. And then the 42, you know, he had it corrected and couldn't go anywhere. And, you know, it's going to happen. I mean, the thing I don't understand uh, is that NASCAR has been talking about bump drafting, you know, for I don't know how many times you come here in Daytona. They set it in the drivers meeting and they weren't doing a thing about it out there. I mean, guys are just bump drafting. And the more they do it, the more they get away with it, you know, the less they seem to care. Uh, I know they care, but they're just not doing anything about it. You got to stop it when it starts. And I mean, guys were slamming into one another. They're hitting each other in the corner. And, you know, yeah, we're in control. You know, it's a great racetrack. The thing's got a lot of grip, banking, everything's wonderful. But eventually, just what happened is going to happen. It's going to happen again, too, probably before the day's over. You told Steve Letard at one point your wheels were lifted up on the back stretch. You almost wrecked due to bump traffic. Yeah, well, what people don't understand is, you know, they think that's all great. They're just sitting there running in the back of you. But when you start carrying all that momentum and you got a car in front of you, you, you have to move out eventually to make that pass. If they're hooked to your rear bumper, it's just going to turn you right around. And uh, you said Dale Jr. was the one that was bump drafting you hard? If, I don't know if it's motor or what he has there, but that guy seems to be able to run into the back of people harder than anybody else out there. He's a great drafter. I love racing with him, but man, does he run in the back of people. <laughs> Big hitting the points the way it's looking today so far, but there's still a lot of day left. I mean, you never know what else can happen. Somebody's going to come out of here with a huge points day. Uh, you know what? I, I've said all along, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and uh, it just doesn't seem meant to be for the DuPont Chevrolet. And you know, we just um, we just go out and race now. Uh, we got some great tracks coming up. We can win races. You never know what can happen. But uh, you know, right now I, I'm not even thinking about it because I'm so bummed out that I know that uh, you know, our chances are pretty slim of, of getting up there and winning this championship, if not completely done. The drive for five took a big hit today. He started a sixth in the championship standings. Marty? Matt, Greg Biffle has climbed from a very damaged number 16 car. Was it just starting to get kind of crazy out there, Greg? You know, it wasn't getting that bad. I mean, everybody was kind of doing the same thing. And we just got somebody up there got four wide, it looked like, getting in the corner. And just, you know, you run out of room so quick that that narrows up so fast down there. And uh, somebody just made a mistake. I thought I was through it. I got down on the apron, and then I didn't see the 26. You know, he was spinning and came back up in front of me. Thought we had it. Uh, make it through with the National Guard car, but uh, just too much damage to try and get it back out there. We got so much front damage, and the pulleys on the engine are damaged, and a knock the oil pump belt off. So lots of damage that uh, we won't be able to make minimum speed, so we're going to have to put it in the truck. Jeff Gordon was saying he felt like the bump drafting was a little excessive and kind of surprising to him that NASCAR wasn't doing anything about it. Your take on that? Um, I may not have been in the group he was with. Uh, I didn't think it was excessive. Um, I got hit pretty hard by the 99 a couple times, but, um, you know, 17 and I are working well together, and I worked with the 8 some, but um, just, uh, you know, something was going to happen, I think, sooner or later. It was so smooth out there, and uh, just unfortunate we got caught up in it. Greg Biffle, done for the day, Bill. Under caution here with 142 laps complete. Yeah, I think what happened when I'm looking at this thing, Nemechek, for whatever reason, whatever's going on right up here up front, Nemechek may have checked up. The 99 had to check up of Carl Edwards. He definitely got ran into by the 48. And then when the 48 hit the 99 and turned him sideways, he turned down on Casey and it was just one of those chain reaction things. The guys were checking up and and one guy wasn't fast enough. And it was the accordion effect. Yeah. Something happened about five or six rows in front of there and all of a sudden, boom. 
He gets back to the 40. He runs in the back of the 99. Go on board uh, Dale Jarrett's car here now. Now look at Jimmy Johnson up to the right. See, the, uh, they start checking up. It didn't look like he got hit there, did it? No, it didn't look like he got hit there. But we heard Carl, Carl say on his radio that he got jacked up in the rear. These are the cars involved in the crash. Denny Hamlin, one of the chasers. Jeff Gordon, one of the championship chasers. Kevin Harvick, three of the chase contenders involved in this wreck. Marty? Yeah, I'm trying to describe to what happened to Jamie McMurray because he was asking me, what was your take on all that? I don't know. I, I saw the 15 get underneath um, the 07 and uh, I don't know, I just, those seven got turned around and then you're just kind of along for the ride. Um, so, unfortunate. Seemed like you guys had an awfully fast car and people wanted to work with you, though. Yeah, the Crown Royal Fusion was, uh, it was really fast. Uh, at the start of the race, I, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. It's the same car I ran fifth with here in the spring and um, you just had to put yourself, you know, in the, in the right position at the end of the seal. But it got really hot. I don't know if I got a piece of uh, tear off or something on my grill, but uh, the, the car got really hot, so we kind of had to ride in the back the run just before that. We got it cleaned off and um, you know, just get caught up in a wreck. Jeff Gordon was saying the bump drafting was a little surprising to him. Did you experience any of that? I mean, we were hitting each other pretty good. Um, you know, after the Daytona race, they, they had lightened the bumpers up a lot. And after the Daytona race with like four or five to go, the people started hitting really hard and everyone got out. And I think they were surprised how, uh, how much their car wasn't tore up. So um, it was uh, it's pretty aggressive today. They're working on the 26 car, hoping to get Jamie back into the race, Bill. Thanks, Marty. Also working on cleaning up the track here at Tattledega. Take a look at the championship standings as they run now with 45 laps to go here at Talladega. Jeff Burton, one of four cars that did not pit under this caution. Burton, Tony Stewart, David Stremme, and Reed Sorensen all stayed out. Jeff Burton is the race leader under caution. Lights are out on the pace car. Field will get the green this time by. 144 laps are complete. Reed Sorensen is now the race leader. Jeff no, he's Burton. not. No, he's not. Matt Kenseth is the Matt leader. Matt Kenseth is the race leader. Because Kenseth stopped early on on his right. caution flag right. and, and topped right. off, and Sorensen waited till the end Correct. of the caution to top off. And under this caution, on the last time by, most drivers topped off again. I don't think they can make it the rest of the way. You're talking about running 43 laps. That's a lot. No, but when they do have to come in, that's less fuel they have to wait on when they pit. Good point. All right. Let's see if we can get it sorted out. Twenty-seven cars are scored on the lead lap. Sorensen is now scored in the twenty-seventh spot. After finally making his stop. Jarrett, the second car there is one lap down. But we know he has a fast race car. After all, he qualified second here yesterday morning. See Tony Stewart back there in the 20, trying to push that green 18 car. It's J.J. Ailey in the 18. Five, swings high. Brian Vickers goes to the outside of Kenseth. Got some help. Jimmy Johnson, his teammate. Kyle Busch, another teammate. Marty, what's going on with Kenseth? He's got a strong race car, Wally, but he was a little worried about the other guys pitting behind him. He brought it up on the radio right as everybody was doing it behind him. So they could not make it to pit road. They cannot make it all the way on fuel. They have a very strong race car. They're also fairly confident. We'll have at least one more caution before the end of the race, Alan. Let's talk the top two cars in the race right now. Brian Vickers, Jimmy Johnson. Vickers on the green flag pit stop just before the caution came out, had a left front tire going down. Lucky break for them. They found it as they took the tire off the car. Jimmy Johnson, I talked to Chad Kadaus under the caution. He said no damage for them in the bottleneck that started that big wreck. He said they came down pit road to take four tires and top off the fuel as a precaution, and obviously to, to get the fuel out of the car. Well, look at that. The 20 and the 8 found each other. Had a really good run. 
almost had to slam on the brakes when they got to the 88. Jeff Gordon's car back in the garage. Ooh, Robbie Gordon gets a good run on Junior down at the bottom of the seven car. And try to get another spot. Oh, oh, trouble for the 41. Stay below the yellow line, please. Caution is out. Looks like done. Done is not a problem there. That's what I was thinking. Done. Now what are you going to do, Benny? Well, 38. Um, this is close. This is very, very close. Some of these cars might be able to make it, but we saw Kenseth. He ran out of fuel in 37 laps, and it looks to me like that the Roush cars get as good a fuel mileage as any of the rest of them, and he ran out in 37 laps one time. So, so do you wait until this car, where you're ready, ready to go green, come in and top off, and take the chance? There might be 37 laps to go. That's right. right. Dale Jarrett in the 88 car is the lucky dog. He will come around and be the 27th car on the lead lap. Here's DJ, former Talladega winner. His dad, Ned, has a birthday coming up this week. Happy birthday, Ned. Probably be celebrating with a round of golf, don't you think? I think he will. I don't blame him a bit. Hope you shoot your age, Ned. You gonna elaborate on that or just gonna <laughs> drop it right there, big drop fella? Right there. <laughs> it's about par. About par. <laughs> Their road is closed under caution here at Talladega with 39 laps to go. Still under caution here at Talladega. Jimmy Johnson is scored as the race leader. A quick look at our Napa Field summary. 19 different leaders, 53 lead changes. Greg Biffle, Kenny Wallace, and Derek Cope are the three cars scored out of the race. Field coming from pit road. Marty, you'll start it. And Robbie Reiser talking Matt Kenseth into his pit stall right now. They're going to take fuel right here. Enough fuel, they think, maybe, to get to the end of the race. It's going to be very close. He's going to have to save some on the track. Matt? It's going to be the exact same scenario for the nine of Casey Kane. They packed a full. He's away. A.B. Watch for Jimmy Johnson to stop and immediately start creeping forward in this 48. That's how little fuel they'll need to top off the tank. There he goes. Tell you what, these guys need to stay on the apron all the way around the track, <laughs> BP. Yeah. Because when you get up on that banking, that fuel will spill out of your overflow in the back of your cell. If you stay on the banking, you'll keep that fuel in the car. So it'll be interesting to see what these guys do in the corners. It's also a shorter way around. It's a shorter way around, but there is so much doggone debris down there. Yes. It's always a concern for a flat tire. You think some of these guys might be back to pit road before we go to green? I do. I think. It, I, I don't think all of them can make it, no. Okay. <laughs> See how it plays out. Right now, 38 laps to go at Talladega. Fourth race in the chase. See how it plays out. Field has gotten the one to go. Watch this on pit road. Championship leader Jeff Burton in that orange car. There he is, the orange car. He's start, starting out pit road. Mike Bliss in the 49, trying to get to his pit. That's five car. See, Kansas leading. The five car is trying to leave the pits. And there we see the five and the 49 of Bliss make contact. And I believe there might be some damage on that right front. Here's from the end car. Watch the five peels into the 49. And I'm sure there's damage to the right front fender of the five car. And a good job by Jeff Burton. Avoiding trouble on pit road. Here are the unofficial standings in the NASCAR Bush Series after 30 of 35 races. Kevin Harvick continues to lead in the championship standings. Imagine that. I think a better word is dominate. Yep, and you'll see them uh, on TNT next Friday night from the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Jeff Gordon returns to the track, currently scored 38, 14 laps down. He can get by Reed Sorensen. They said he was in the pits for 24 minutes. That's pretty good work by that DuPont crew to get him back on the racetrack. Car 24 for 24 minutes. A number of these cars have just topped off on pit row. 36 to go when they get to the line. Martin Truex Jr. is the race leader. It might
might be Kansas all over again. The leader, the winner, may coast across the start-finish line. It's not as easy to coast here as it is at Kansas. No, you might get run over <laughs> if you're coasting in front of this pack. Got his teammate Vickers behind him. And Chuex has got no help, Alan. Well, he's, got, uh, no. he's got the 15 car and the A car back there, Alan. Yeah, they got to catch up to him first to be able to help him, though, BP, and not pass him while they do like they <laughs> just did. Uh, Martin Turex did not pit under that caution. They had just stopped back at lap 144. They stayed out that time. Jimmy Johnson, the leader, as soon as he left pit road, his crew chief, Jack Canales, told him, save fuel. Then he came on and told him, you know, actually got better mileage when we were running up front early in the race than when we were back in traffic. Jimmy having to work the pedal on and off a little harder when he was back in traffic. We'll see if they make a run for it here. Marty? Alan, just before it went green, Matt Kenseth came on the radio and said, if we can run with that 8-2 or the 16 car, we'll be in good shape. Robbie Reiser came back on the radio and said, uh, the 16's out of the race. He said, well, then find that 8-2 and two for him because we worked really well with them today. How about that Menard in the 15 car? Is he lap down? No, he's the leader. Oh boy, Paul. Did you get a shove there from Junior? He got a pretty good push. Definitely got a big push from Junior. Junior couldn't hang with it. And Junior's going to lose four or five spots. Dave, they are cheering in Wisconsin. Uh, yes, they are. Now, I was just going down to check on their fuel mileage situation, get back to you on that, because they did not come down and top off. But this is an old deal Junior car. It's a very good car, and Paul's been very complimentary of it all day long. However, yeah, without a lot of experience at Chattanooga, not a lot of friends. Mark Martin runs fourth in that lane. Matt and Bill chugging along is that six car. Mark Martin. Now Pat Trison told him fuel is not an issue for us. Just go ahead and go out and get him. The problem is Mark says his car is good. He just doesn't have enough speed to try to pull out and make a run. Meanwhile, the two of Bush, they are good on fuel. The only question, if they get a green-white checker, they may be questionable, but that is it, while the nine of Casey Kane came in and topped off. Marty? His old friend Jeff Burton down there on the high line, rather. He stayed out under that last caution for one lap, so he could lead the lap. He got the five bonus points for leading that lap. Jeff, Jeff said we have a car that we can work with and get to the front with. Very smart on pit road earlier. We showed you the replay, avoided what could have been a bad situation. Now he's got a fast car with his old teammate, Matt Kenseth, behind him. Doing a little mirror driving there, BP. This is where you start trying to use the guys. You look up in the mirror, if you see somebody coming like Stewart right there with the big run, you pull down in front of that car and hoping that he'll give you a push and get you to the front. You got to time it just right, and you got to make sure they hit you straight. I tell you what, that Tony Stewart in that 20 car was getting an unbelievable push from the nine of Casey Kane as we see him four wide in the tri-oval. changes today the most here since July of 1984 update on Tony Stewart from Marty and here he comes he's in second place he's kind of hung in the back for a good part of this race but on lap 130 they took on four tires and this is key on lap 151 they topped off they're fairly confident unlike most of the other guys they can make it all the way on fuel fairly confident. yeah how, how confident were they last week <laughs> you know, they said, the engineer said they were going to be a half a lap short. And unbelievably, they were a half a lap short. See the 40 car there? That's David Stremme in the mix. Down on the bottom underneath Casey Kane in the nine car. Got a pretty good run. If he could just pull it off right now and slip up in front of the nine, but he doesn't have enough and doesn't have help. Tony Stewart said this is his new favorite track. Robbie Gordon at the seven. And the rookie, David Gilliland, the pole sitter behind him. Wow, they're stacked up going into three. Wow, did you see Harvick stick that 29 car right in the middle of a four wide? And they're still four wide, VP. Casey Kane in the lead, in that nine. He couldn't run four wide off the four before they paid this place without a wreck. Tony Stewart going for the lead. That time, 
Stewart took the lead. But Casey Kane led at the line and got his five bonus points. 24 of Jeff Gordon could not meet the minimum speed. Stewart back out front. A couple of chasers right behind him. There's the bump draft they're going on right there. That's Vickers all over the back of Casey Kane's car. Now you're not supposed to hit a guy in the corners here. We heard Gordon talking about that earlier when we interviewed him. But when you're on the straightaway, hit away. Kane back to the lead. Through the tri-oval oval towards start finish. And Tony Stewart, just like Jeff Gordon earlier in the race, he's going to lose about 15, 20 spots. Right about this time of the race, you may have a friend for a lap. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. That's about, well, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Casey Kane out front, but 29 laps to go here at Talladega. Time now for the All-State Good Hands Driver. Yeah, this is Dale Earnhardt Jr. going through the big crash, about 10 cars involved. He just kind of stops and picks his way through and comes through with no damage. All-State official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. Who's Jr. behind Kurt Busch. Casey Kane in that outside lane, then the two Hendrick cars, Johnson and Vickers. And championship leader Jeff Burton in the 31. Watch that nine car, Casey Kane, come back. Yeah, that high groove is working pretty good, BP, and the, had the 48 really pounded on that back bumper, which has been helping too. With the smaller plate, BP, better fuel mileage? Yes, a little bit. Uh, it might mean a lap or two in a run. Look at that. 48 all over the back of the nine car. Because less horsepower uses less fuel. And these guys basically very similar to Kansas right on the edge of their fuel window here. They are right dead on the edge. They have warned Dale Earnhardt Jr. Step forward, step forward on that. Step forward on that car. Warren <laughs> Dale Jr. for using his front bumper. Bump drafting. Yeah, they just don't want you to do it right here. Because when you start bump drafting a guy in the corner and the guy's got his wheels turned and you hit him in the rear, it just pulls the rear wheels off the ground and it, and it wants to spin the cars out. Now, when you're going straight, you can take the shot. You just hold the steering wheel straight. But as the cars turn into the corner, you don't want to be pushing somebody through the corner. The car is just so good, he just closes up on them in the, in the corners. Okay, fuels could be an issue here. Let's uh, get some reports from Pit Road. Matt? While the car on the inside, the two of Kurt Busch doesn't have any issue with fuel. The nine of Casey Kane, they are right on the edge of their window. In fact, over the last caution, his team was telling him to shut the engine off and just coast. A.B.? Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief, Tony Earnhardt Jr., told me a couple minutes ago they are good to the finish on fuel. He said it very emphatically, yes. Chad Canales, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, you see him in the 48 there on the outside lane. He says they're okay to the finish on fuel, Dave. And the 29 car of Kevin Harvick, good, real good, according to his crew. More than that, they fixed the front end, and that car is aerodynamically back near where it started, Marty. Dave, you can just feel the intensity pick up as it goes three wide out on the racetrack. Matt Kenseth is just a little bit short on fuel. Jeff Burton, however, says he's about a tenth of a gallon short, but they're going to go for it as best they can. So a tenth of a gallon short, but the championship leader is still going to the end. And Matt Kenseth, as we said, a little bit short on fuel, we think. And then we got a straight answer from Robbie Reiser. So I think 17, just a little bit short on fuel. And remember, they ran out at Dover but so far, their plan is to stay on the track. Matt? Marty, his teammate, who's in his mirror, Mark Martin, they've told him he is good to go on fuel. Fuel is not a concern. He is saying, though, that it's getting awfully warm inside that race car. Dale. King goes back to front. Now, the way Junior got the lead, if you saw that pass, was he hit the two while the two was turning into the corner. 
the two of Kurt Busch got loose and he went flying up the racetrack. And that's what NASCAR doesn't want you to do. Junior tries to edge away. It's Jimmy Johnson and Brian Vickers behind the eight. Casey Kane leads that inside lane. Twenty-seven cars on the lead lap. Here's the pass Wally was talking about. Okay, so watch this go down the corner. Now he's already got the wheel turned, and he just got into the back of him just a little bit. Kurt Busch had to save the car. He slid up the racetrack. Caught his breath. <laughs> Junior got the lead. Now Casey Kane in the nine is trying to take back the lead. They've been leading on the back bumper of that nine car today, haven't they? Yeah, they, they have. Everybody moves. has been. in the two. Meanwhile, here comes Tony Stewart up on the inside trying to make it three wide. Has a little bit of help with Scott Riggs. Let's just hope Scott's fast enough to push the 20. Riggs got a lucky dog to get back on the lead lap. Spots five in the top eight. All we'll change here so fast, though. Yeah, it really does. They are really nose to tell right now. A pack of 27 cars on the lead lap. We have a one minute break. We have to get in before the checkered flag. We'll do that right now. Come back, take you to the checkers here at Talladega. Less than 17 laps to go here at Talladega. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the race leader. It just looks like that high line is the place to be today, BP. And I think Jr. knows that. He does not want to give that high line up. And Casey Kane is running the middle of the racetrack. I'm surprised he doesn't drive down to the yellow line and run the very bottom of the track. I think he's afraid if he does that and he opens up the right side, they're going to fill it. And then he'll be down on the bottom all by himself. And go back to the end of the line. Good point. 27 cars on the lead lap, separated by a second and a half. See the five car there on the bottom of the racetrack on the by himself, Kyle Busch. I'm telling you, he has overheating problems. And he's trying to run down there and get some air to go through the grill to cool the engine. You can feel in the Bank of America countdown to Green pre-race show that Dale Earnhardt Jr. could not wait for this race to get started. Well, he knew he had a good race car. I mean, he was very disappointed in qualifying, but in practice, his car was really strong. They were real happy with that car. And you're right, he couldn't wait to get started. Five times. Allen. Well, Bill Dale Earnhardt Jr. looking to see if he can score. Oh, we got trouble, A.B. J.J. Yaley trying to hang on to it. Caught a couple of cars. Paul Menard, Tony Stewart, David Stremme. Kyle Busch, who'd fallen off the pace, gets through it. There were seven chasers running in the top ten. They all appear to have gotten been ahead of it. A lot of damage there, the Stewart's car, as well as Yaley's. There's Denny Hamlin's on board. Jeff Gordon, meanwhile, is back on the rack. This is going to happen right in front of Tony Stewart. It's like Strim is going to get in the back of the 18 and just hook him. And the 11 car ran in the back of the 20. No, I guess it was a 15 that did most of the damage. Boy, it looked like Hamlin got through there somehow. 
He ran in the back of the 20, but I'm not sure how much damage that he did. He got him pretty good. He did. A lot of quarter panel damage. So the right side tire is smoking on Hamlin as well. Well, I mean, Yaley, Yaley just got off the throttle like, yeah. almost like a tire blew or something, because he slowed down really fast. And those guys behind him, they couldn't do anything. Here's Hamlin's on board. Mm. He got it. He got hit in the right side, too, yeah, did Allen's got his pit. And that last shot you saw right on the right front tire of the 11 car. After Denny gathered things up and got under control, he called Mike Ford, the crew chief, on the radio and said, the steering wheel has turned 90 degrees. And he kind of laughed because they had made six pit stops after being involved in the last wreck, stayed on the lead lap, and were in that lead draft, going to have a decent finish. And now they got caught up in the second of the two big wrecks. And there's still time to get in another one. <laughs> Always looking at the bright side, aren't you, brother? <laughs> Marty? And guys, the odd part of this, all three Gibbs cars were involved in that accident. Uh, Tony Stewart sitting here on pit road, a lot of right front damage. He was very calm on the radio, some right, uh, some rear damage as well. But obviously they had a car they felt like could win the race, and there's a lot of rear damage on the 20 car. They're going to bring them back in and uh, see if they can continue to fix this damage on the 20 car. Thanks, Marty. Bobby Labonte in the 43 car is the lucky dog. Now then. Will anybody come in and top off? Or this may be enough. Now the caution flag, they're going to use less fuel. Yeah. They may, stay, they have stayed on the racetrack. So the leaders stay out. You see the drivers involved in the crash. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has scored the race leader. 13 laps to go at Talladega. Sunday night football, not that far away. 8 Eastern on NBC, the defending champs and the Chargers. LaDainian Tomlinson in for the Chargers for the big game. Catch up on all of today's action with Bob Chris Sterling and the boss at 7 Eastern on Football Night in America, right that's, here on NBC. That's a really good show. I really enjoy those four guys. You know, Bill, I know that the Aflac folks have some worthwhile information for them, so it's time to cue the duck. Okay. Time for the Aflac trivia question. Affleck. Who was the last driver to sweep Talladega races and win the championship in the same season? Might have been Earnhardt. Oh, well, way to live on the edge, BP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down to pit road, here's Dave. Yeah, we were looking at it together. Todd Barrier, crew chief of the 29, uh, Earnhardt's uh, old ride here. Now, last week you change a spring and come home 15th and keep your championship hopes alive. This week you, you fix a beat-up race car. Can you stay in the top 10 here? I, I think for sure we can stay in the top 10, uh, but top 10 is not going to get it, so we got to go harder than that. And um, We're not, we're not going to be satisfied unless we get out of the top five. But there's a lot of wrecking left, I'm sure, and a lot of things we're going to have to miss because there's a lot of laps to go. Uh, is the car truly raceable? Can Kevin race it hard? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The car's not hurt at all, so I think we're in pretty good shape right here. Just um, it's going to be having a partner and being able to get where we get up there to the front. Uh, looks like that eight can just match the gas and go whenever he wants to, but aside of that, I think we're all right. Imagine that here at Talladega, Marty. Well, Dave, let's summarize the last few minutes on the 31s radio for the championship leader. Jeff Burton did not want to pit. Scott Miller, you did for fuel. How did Jeff win that battle? Well, I mean, we are... Basically, what happened there is that nobody else looked like they were going to duck in. We should be fine now to the end of the race. I was just trying to give us a little bit of a, uh, a, a good shot for making it on a green-white checkered in case it came down to that. There hasn't been that many yellows today. That might not come into play, but if anybody else was going to be safe, I needed to be safe, too. Jeff has driven a smart race, I would say, today. Does he have anything for the eight, though? Uh, I'm not really sure. You know, you never can't tell about him. He, he leaves a little in the bag for the end. We'll see. With a green-white checker, the 31 probably cannot make it all the way, but if it doesn't go green-white checker, they should be good, Matt. Kenny Francis continues to work the mileage number. So are you good if we get a green-white checker situation, or is it still very questionable? I think a green-white checker would be pretty questionable. I think we're good to the end. Uh, looks like the best numbers we got, we should be okay, especially with the cautions here. Be hard to say on a green white checker, but really no one's got any choice. You know, the way the track position is and tend to go, you've just got to stay out and hope for the best. They continue to tell them shut the car off and coast under caution and also protect that bottom. Do not give it up, baby. 
with Tony Uri Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief. Your driver got a warning from NASCAR earlier before. How did he react to that? Oh, he was cool with it. You know, he just he asked the question like two cautions before that. You know, when when was too much, and you know if he'd been jumping over the line. So they they were nice enough that they let us let him know, and uh, he's cool with it. Uh, this is the smaller plates. It, it just makes it tighter, and the guys have to do what they got to do to get around here. But uh, you know, uh, we, I'm really proud of my guys. It's a car that we uh, just decided to bring Monday. So uh, hats off to all them guys. You've got two teammates lined up behind you. You've already come back from a lap down and had a good recovery. Has he strategized it all over the radio? Um, no, not really. I mean, he's been in this situation before, and he's a, one of the. He's probably the best out there to do it. So uh, I'm gonna leave it in his, his hands, and whatever we get, we get. Uh, we're still looking at the big picture, but I know he can do it. Thanks, Tony. You know, earlier in the day, I, I was concerned about the A car. I thought when he got in front that his car might not be good enough. But I've heard all the experts say he's the best car out there, so I believe Jeff Gordon and Todd Berry. They black flagged the 07 of Clint Boyer, so he's had to return to uh, pit road. You saw the damage on his car. Be 10 to go when they get the green. That was on board with Boyer. So we're going green this time. That's the plan. OK. Pace car to pit road. 25 cars on the lead lap from Dale Earnhardt Jr. all the way back to Denny Hamlin. There are some cars that could have pulled up, but I'm glad they didn't. Seven of the ten drivers in the chase for the next Tell Cup restart in the top ten spots. Report from Pit Road is that Tony Stewart will try to help Denny Hamlin get to the front. He makes a course for Joe Gibbs Racing. And as Alan Bestwick talked about, <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the 20, the 48, the 25. Rick Henry owned cars, teammates, directly behind him. Yeah, I'm sure that eight car will start getting real wide here in the last nine laps. He'll be looking in that mirror. What was the what's well, He may have a tire going with Burton. Championship leader. Be ready, guys. Be ready. The way that car wiggles, he may have a tire flat. Marty, he came on the radio and said something's wrong. He said, I think I've got a flat. Fortunately, it happened pretty much on the back stretch going into turn three, a very opportune time to have a flat tire for Jeff Burton. He diagnosed it. He said it's a left rear flat tire. They bring in the pit road. They will change left side tires only for the championship leaders as Dell Jr. and everybody else races around the track. He will try to get these tires changed as quickly as possible and back out on the racetrack. Oh, yeah, Top break yeah, for the championship back up, leader, back Bill. Up, back up, back up, back up. They're going to go down a lap for sure, Marty. Evidently, the right rear. They're changing right sides as well. Four tires under green for Jeff Burton. He came to pit road with an 87-point lead in the chase for the next Telcom. Well, that's going to change in a lap. He said here in the media center on Friday, Everybody's gonna have a bad race. It could be here for me. Look at that from 87 to 16. Mm. And one lap with 10 to go. Well, that just made the race a lot closer. Top seven within 83 points. Top eight within one race. 156 points. Now, the 48 and the 25 are probably trying to figure out BP when they're going to pull out. It's not if. It's when. It's when. And they're hoping that the 9 goes with them, because I think the only way to beat the 8 car is if everybody leaves them out to dry. Leaves them hung out there. Allen. Well, not only when you pull out to pass, but where you pull out to pass. Brian Vickers, third place car in that 25 under the caution. An extensive kind of monologue on his team radio talking about the fact that the inside lane just doesn't seem to be there. That's why you see Dale Jr. protecting the outside lane. That's why you don't really see anybody marching forward down the bottom. Ah, here they go in the back now. About, about 10th or 12th spot. They've all died from the bottom. Kids are trying to go on the inside. Hoping for help from Harvick. Then they get back in line. This is where it starts getting dicey. Seven laps to go. Everybody wants to get everything they can get. 
Carl Edwards by himself on the bottom of the racetrack. But he has, he has Gilliland back there in the 38 if he can help him. And he has Mark Martin in front of him who could pull out. Tell you, Junior's car really goes through the corners. I mean, I know it's fast in the straightaway, but his car really, really rolls through the corners. At Daytona, when the eight car was having so much success, I felt like that was his reasonable success, that he got through the corners so well. Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car won here in May, May 1st. Look, you can actually see him pulling away from the pack in the corner. Is there any chance they'd all pull out and try and hang out Earnhardt? Well, that's what I'm saying. The only way I think they're going to beat him is if they do that. They all have to, and, and they should do it sooner than later. Right. <laughs> I mean, they shouldn't wait for the last lap because, like I said, Junior's going to make that car awfully wide. Five to go at the line this time. And so he should. <laughs> <laughs> Through the trial. Remember, the start-finish line here is down past the end of pit road. Johnson thinking about it. It could be that the 48 and 25 can turn the radios to talk to each other. Oh, I'm sure they can. Yeah, we, it, and they can do that. Jimmy can say to the 25, OK, let's go. And they can peel off. But they, but they really need to be talking to the 9 and the 2 right. also to see where all those guys are going to go. Because if the 48 and the 25 pull down and Casey Kane goes to the 8, they're done. A.B. Just a couple things to think about. First of all, Jimmy Johnson trying to race to get back into a championship in second. He certainly doesn't want to get involved in a wreck with a risky move. Brian Vickers is leaving the Hendrick Motorsports team at the end of the year. He wants his first win. How loyal will he be to Jimmy Johnson's back bumper? We'll see. Matt? We got two Dodge teams, Everham and Penske, both looking for their first restricted play win. Both are waiting until the pass, the last possible second before they make their move, diving down to the middle groove. Everyone just trying to be patient before the chaos starts. Everybody tries to make that last move. Mark Martin is trying to get the 43 to go with him on the last lap. I think the last lap is too long to wait. You've got to do it within two or three laps to go because you're not going to have enough time to pull it off with one lap to go, I don't think. Everyone is just terrified to pull out and go to the end of this line. They're afraid if they go, nobody will go with them. Exactly. If they make a move, everyone's going to run behind the eight car. Go. Just Three. Leave them hung out. Three to go. 48 cars trying to lay back, Jim. That's so we can get a run. Yeah, what he means by that, he's just he's bringing the field behind him back a little bit so then when he gets back on the gas he'll get a draft off the eight car get a run and be able to pass him but like i said the eight car is watching out of that mirror as much as he's watching out of that windshield right now see he's got the run just not enough of a run to where he can slingshot by him gonna have to lay back a little bit more <laughs> running out of time they're coming down to the start finish line two to go this time This is when it's got to happen. Two to go. And they're going to get antsy in the back once they start running side by side behind them. Coming to the white flag this time. All lined up, 10 in the line, then two wide. <laughs> Earnhardt Jr., a five time winner here at Talladega. I can't believe nobody's pulled out. I can't believe Casey Kane has to pull down. Because Casey, I mean, he needs to be going for the win. Yes. It's not a point steal for him or Kurt Busch. Fans cheering at Talladega. Earnhardt Jr. leads last lap. Vickers wants to go. He getting a little wider. There he goes. Junior. Down. Oh, no! Vickers hits the 48. the 48 and takes out Earnhardt and Jimmy Johnson. Caution is out. The leader.
Warriors had already taken the white flag. So is it going to be the 25 or the 9? There are 19 scoring loops all around the track. NASCAR will use scoring loops and videotape to determine the race winner. The checkered flag is out. Checkers and yellow out at Talladega. Oh, man, oh, man. Not going to be a popular win for the 25. <laughs> it is. Ray Evernham, owner of the 9 car. And you know, this, this damage came from hitting the 8 car in the left door on the 48. Jimmy Johnson. Okay, the 48 gets a run. He goes to turn out. The 25 goes with him and just hooks the back of Jimmy Johnson's car. Jimmy Johnson, as he's wrecking, gets into the 8 car. 8 car, just an innocent bystander on that deal. Now watch the, the 48 going on the left door. The left rear tire, actually. Watch, these guys get a good run. The 48 pulls out, the 25 pulls out behind him. Just misjudges just an inch. Just enough to turn the 48 into Dale Jr.'s left rear. See it again. Same thing happened in the truck series race Friday night. I mean, last night. Mike Skinner hooked the right rear of Mike Walsh, and in the wall he went. He hit the wall. He didn't have the eight car to bounce off of. He went in the wall. Get on board the eight car here. This is a look out the back. You'll see Jimmy Johnson get a good run. This is what he was waiting for. And then watch the 25 just hook the rear fender here. Just, I mean, just touch the bumper. We're still waiting for NASCAR to declare a winner. Vickers thinks it's him. We wait for word from NASCAR. Dave? With Tony Uri, Tony Uri Jr., crew chief for Dale Jr., it looks like you were going to get teamed up on anyway, but you didn't expect to get wrecked. No, I mean that was um, it was just a bad deal. I mean that's that's racing. Uh, you know, I just I hate it for a point state. That was the biggest deal. We knew we might might finish third, but uh, you know Brian was just a little eager to get his first win or whatever. But uh, you know, my hats off to Chad and them guys. I mean, uh, Jimmy is he's. Uh, matured a lot in the last year as far as a driver on these restrictor plate races so uh, it's not his fault it's just Brian was a little bit anxious but uh, you know that's the way it goes uh, we just got to keep our chin up and dig for this championship uh, just glad DI is back on the restrictor plate deal but my boys in the motor shop just keep digging we'll get them all right true emotion here from the A camp today didn't win Bill and Brian Vickers did that's the word from NASCAR Brian Vickers is the race winner Keep in mind that Brian Vickers and Jimmy Johnson are teammates at Hendrick Motorsports. And Vickers is leaving that team at the end of this season. Is not allowed in team meetings and hasn't been for a while at Hendrick. Chevy congratulates Brian Vickers and the 25 Monte Carlo SS on another great team victory. 25 of the last 34 NASCAR Manufacturers Championships and counting. Chevy and American Revolution. Marty. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has climbed from the car. The eight Budweiser Chevy is very damaged. It's going to take off his helmet, take a moment to cool down here and uh, explaining things to to us guys here. Junior, he wants a second. He's going to take his uh, booties off. Obviously upset, leading on the final lap. Handshake from Tony Uri Sr. on a race that was uh, very well run. And certainly not the end that he wanted. Clearly had the best car today. And I know that's a disappointing one to take. Walk me through what, what was going on with the 48. Um, well, he was just waiting to the last lap. Um, very smart move on his part. And they had a good run coming uh, at the end of the race here. And as you see right there, they got a good push together, working really good together there. And I knew it was just really not going to be much I could do. Uh, he went to the inside here, and I tried to block him a little bit. But once I understood that he was there, I didn't push the issue anymore. And the 25 turned him into me. So. I mean, uh, Brian just, you know, excited there. I hate it for a 48. I hate it for our team. We had a great car, and 
not really that upset. I mean, we, you know, it's just the way racing goes here, and sometimes you come out on the good end of those deals. I'm really happy Brian got his first win, and for him, Rick Hendrick and everybody, but, you know, just unfortunate we tore our car. My guys really wanted to win today. This will be a big hit in the championship standings real quick, Junior. <laughs> yeah. Ain't much I could have done about it. I, believe me, I tried to save it. <laughs> All right, Junior did the best he could, Bill, but uh, ends up with a wrecked race car. Thank you, Marty. Well, Brian Vickers has pulled into victory lane, and Alan Bestwick is there. And we'll hear the reception that Brian will get from his team and from the fans. Brian, your first win. I guess the first thing I need to ask you is tell me about the last lap. Yeah. Oh, man. That was, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting to get our first win at the GMAC Chevy. I always, I said I wanted to get a win for uh, for Ricky in this car. I want to dedicate this this win to Ricky so bad. Um, not quite exactly how I planned it. Uh, you know, Jimmy had a heck of a run, and I was pushing him. And then when he turned turned down, I got off of him, and he and he turned down to pass the eight, and the eight just kept pushing him down. And when when he jerked to to avoid the eight, trying to block him, I just got in the back of him. I apologize. That's the last thing I want to do is uh, was get into Jimmy and all that take place. But uh, uh, you know, when the eight job chopped him and Jimmy swerved and and I, I just got him it's not how I wanted to win it but but it's nice to get a win for this 25 car it's been a long time I was going to say can you explain the mixed emotions that this must bring for you <laughs> mixed emotions you're not you're, you're saying enough I mean I'll tell you there at the last lap I knew that uh, that Jimmy was waiting for the last lap and I was willing to push him to the front I didn't expect for us to be able to win I, I was looking for us to maybe get a second place um, for Jimmy to, to push Jimmy by the eight and that'd be it and uh, but what happened happened and and uh, you know it's it's still nice to get this win it's uh it's not quite how we planned it but uh, I hate it for Jimmy I want to apologize to him uh, like I said it just um, when he swerved to miss the eight you know I was there and it just happened. You talked about Ricky Hendrick. You are leaving this team in just another six races now. Thoughts on finally getting the breakthrough win with the Hendricks? Yeah, it, it means all the world. I, I mean, you know, for for uh, like I said, you know, for Jimmy to to have to wreck is not how I wanted it, but um, but to get this win for Ricky Hendrick uh, and everybody in that plane crash, it just means all the much. To, I mean, all the world to me. I, uh, you know, it was close to me and and. Um, you know, I miss him all, all the world, and, and uh, we've been wanting to get this win for him for a long, long time. It's good to see the 25 back in victory lane. What does it mean to you? Was there some doubt that you could get that breakthrough win? Because it had been a little while in coming. Yeah, I mean, it's, it has been. It's been, uh, it's been too long. You know, it's, uh, you know this team, is, is, is we've come so close so many times, and stuff happened. You know, blown tires, you pit, and the caution comes out. And, and uh, man, to get this win and uh, get it for Ricky means a lot. Brian, congratulations. Brian Vickers, the winner at Talladega today. Dave? Jimmy Johnson trying to repeat, talk about the last lap and the pass attempted by you and your teammate. Um, got a run on the eight and got inside of him and just got hit from behind and it turned me into the eight and then off we went. So, um, need to see the video. Just can't believe it. I mean, here we go all day long. I had a great chance to make up some points and uh, end up getting crashed by a teammate. And you know, obviously, his exuberance to, as we'll try to pull up some video for you here, get to victory lane. It's very tight out there when you make these fast passes, isn't it? Uh, it is. And, um, you know, when you've got to run that big on someone, you should probably just pull down and pass them instead of trying to bump draft them. Um, I just I just got turned around. So one of those deals. And in your hopes for the championship, Jimmy, this is a, this is another tough blow. It is. I mean, we've we've got the speed. I'm so proud of this race team and everything Hendrick Motorsports is doing. Uh, just too bad we can't uh, capitalize on days when we, can, we really have a chance to make up some points. Okay, and we see that you're okay. We're glad for that as well. And uh, just sorry it ended this way today. Marty. And Dave, for Jeff Burton, things turned around at the end of the race, too. You thought you had a cut left rear tire. It turned out to be a right rear, and that cost you a lot of time on pit road. Yeah, I don't think it mattered anyway. We uh, we tried to get by with putting on two tires, but you're going to go a lap down here, having to pit on the green. And, um, you know, we had a good job today with the senior Chevrolet. Everybody did a nice job. We had good pit stops. We uh, were sitting there running fifth with 10 to go and cut of tires. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh, everybody's had some bad luck in this thing, and, and uh, we had some today. So uh, it's, uh, you know, again, I'm proud of the job we did today. I think we did everything we needed to do. We just had a little bit of stuff not go our way. The way things turned upside down at the end of the race there, you're still the championship leader. Do you feel us lucky in some ways? Well, I mean, um, I don't know. I don't feel it's hard to say. It's hard to feel lucky when you're running fifth with 10 to go and finish 27th or wherever we finish. But, uh, you know, again, it's, um, you know, stuff happens to everybody. And uh, we had something happen today. Certainly we, uh, you know, we still have the lead and it's a tight race as it should be. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Jeff got it right. They did finish 27th. Matt. 
unofficially second and third. Casey Kane and Kurt Busch. Now, first off, let's talk about as the white flag lap. Oh, you slide in here. You oh. guys are working together. We'll, we'll, we'll do a combo platter here. How were you guys trying to work together as the white flag started to come out? Well, I wasn't uh, real sure that you know, those other three got away a little bit, and Kurt had been pushing me for 30, 30 laps. So I was, you know, we had two Dodge Charters going pretty good, and um, one more, about just a little bit longer to wait for that yellow, and uh, I think I would have won, and he would have ran second. So <laughs> it was, it was uh, interesting the way it finished. And a big run, though, for you and your team because you guys kept cycling the tires, trying to get Penske his first plate win. Absolutely. We had a really good day with our Miller Lite Dodge. Proud of the team and our pit sequence that we were on and running with Casey at the end. You know, it was Dodge's teaming up. So that was a good hookup. Uh, just us two. Good job, man. And just trying to get a shot at the win. You know, I've got five top tens here, but not a win. Maybe it was not to be up front today. So it was really interesting running that top groove. Uh, we were all kind of pinned behind where the eight car wanted to run. And, uh, just just real close and real proud of this team though. Good effort today. Third for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll break through eventually. Just uh, persistence will pay off. Dave? With Mark Martin now who unofficially finishes ninth today after yet another wild day at Talladega. It was a really good race. Uh, you know I want to say that these are the the greatest drivers in the world and they really used their head today. Uh, obviously we were going to wreck at the end. It promoted uh, wildness and all the drivers uh, kept everything in check all day long until till the end and you could expect it. I'm real proud of Pat Tryson and our triple A team for uh, uh, you know racing smart uh, calling a great race and and uh, digging in. We finished better than we ran today and that's a tribute to what they've the last two weeks we've done that and I'm real proud of those guys. Did you feel Mark like you were able to race today or, or just to sort of hang on. My car wasn't you know fast enough uh, to really do any serious business but uh, man that truck yesterday that was a different story that thing would do some business but today we were just uh, kind of where we were and uh, the guys did a great job uh, you know getting a top 10 out of it and unofficially fourth in the championship you guys are still right in the hunt Mark. Yeah I think we're really close now. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we move back to fourth or, or not when they get this finish you know all sorted out and everything but uh, even if we are we're a lot closer. Than we